All right, it's loading now. And we're live. How's it going, everybody? Philip Ong here, right. Dan Dupont, we're reporting to you guys Ooh. live on the evening of yeah, Sunday. It's Sunday, going December down. <laughs> 20th. Finally started, finally got it. Yeah, this is Kilauea Summit we're talking about, Kilauea Caldera. Um, we're seeing here, I got a live image from Ken Boyer, who's live at the Caldera. Um, and we also have uh, uh, the webcams here from the USGS. So you guys can see here, you know, we're not quite all the way booted up here, but uh, let me get my... Yeah, we're just trying to get it all going. My brush, let me find my brush. So yeah, we have an eruption in the Kilauea Caldera happen late this evening, late tonight. Um, just getting going, as you can see there, like it's it, you can see that glow and that uh, that cloud right there is uh, going to be a mix of SO2 and a lot of steam from that lake that's going to be gone by morning, most likely. Yeah, well, we saw uh, a, a lake, a green lake. During the 2018 eruption, it steamed away in what was it? About four hours, six hours, eight hours, somewhere in that right. range. Dane? Yeah, a few hours. This uh, might take a little longer, might take a little less, depending on what kind of volume we have going in to Kilauea uh, at that uh, this eruption. Right. Right now, we really don't know what's in there. It's still kind of a blurred mystery. Right. Right. So yeah, here's the summit webcam. This is uh, uh, the the east angle, right? So here's the wide angle. You can kind of see a little bit of a glow here on the edge of the color. I'll kind of scroll through through these here. View from the tower, each view. Can I see the Ohia tree silhouetted against there? So you guys can see there's quite a lot of uh, steam coming up, right? So this is normal. All the eruptions on Kilauea all come up through the water table. Um, even when Leilani came up through the water table and made a bunch of steam as a first stage of the eruption, this is a little bit different because we see the water exposed there the, through that, that collapse pit that's so deep, so deep that intersects the water table. And of course, we were wondering, you know, it's always a concern because now we see the water, it's more obvious. We're wondering about explosions of the, of the lava with the water. Um, but what we see here is a typical pattern. We see just a bunch of steaming away. You know, um, we, we in the past and, you know, following on the research and explanation that everyone at USGS HVO about the rate of magma coming up was an important aspect as well. How fast it came up, like if, it had, if you had a huge amount coming up really fast, it might be a more danger of explosion. Whereas typical pattern like we're seeing here, um, whereas uh, it can come up, come up through and kind of just steam it away and kind of push its way through and the water can't really get in fast enough. Right. So, um, what we're seeing now is a steady cloud of steam coming off, um, being lit by the glow of you know an eruption. It's hard to see exactly where that is. We'll kind of investigate that as we go here. Um, you can um, kind of see here, looking you down. Go, you need, uh, try and check on that. It looks like you got a window up, an extra window. But yeah, so the plan is is that we're going to kind of live stream tonight and just give you play by play, minute by minute updates as we kind of figure it out what's going on. We have Ken Boyer up uh, live on the scene at uh, Holly Mau Mau, and you can see his footage right there. That's a live stream coming in right now. And the thing about it is, is we um, have been talking about the potential for this type of eruption for a few weeks now, right? We've been talking about how the volcano alert level, which was at, is currently at green, should have probably been raised to yellow because of this type of probable event or likely event or potential event. And now we're kind of here, right? And we were talking about how that the injection of magma that happened on December 2nd was an important event. And we we're also talking about how the location that it happened at was also an important location. And now when I'm looking at the earthquake feed right now, uh, while Phillips, you know, uh, figuring, getting the stream a little bit adjusted, Looking at the earthquakes, the locations of them, it's really close to where that uh, previous injection was on that south side of the caldera. On the uh, looks, it looked to be to me about where the caldera rim is, the old caldera rim, right? And that's potentially where it came up at. We already know that area was comp uh, had one injection, could get it there. And now we're getting a very similar signal. 
except it came to the surface. That's the big difference between now and December 2nd is it got to the surface. Right. Here's our pattern of earthquakes we've had, you know, um, uh, they're kind of scattered all around, you know, um, so it's hard to say exactly. You see kind of a cluster of them on a, on a s southern wall of Hale Mau here. And I still haven't quite got my brush figured out. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, that's yep, not so it. we're just going <laughs> to kind of stay live and kind of keep giving the what updates we can as we figure it out. Try and bring in whatever we uh, bring in some different people potentially. Um, Kaika Marzo might show up at some point on the stream. Uh, we're just, we weren't expecting this one tonight, right? We knew there was a potential, but tonight it, there really wasn't anything on the tilt or GPS that would have led you to believe it would happen, you know, this evening. It was a potential across weeks to months that we were looking at. The exact, that's the hard part about, you know, forecasting the volcano, so to speak, is that you can only get it in a generalized window of where there's higher potential than others. And even when you have right. higher potential, that doesn't mean an eruption. But in this case, it did. Right. And it looks like so from what we've seen so far, this, the lake is steaming away, which is kind of what we wanted to have happen when it erupted there. There are two big scenarios that we were talking about. First one being explosive eruption where magma comes in to the, uh, the lake of water very quickly, a rapid ascent of magma that would lead to some kind of explosion. But if you were to see, if we saw a slower rate of ascent, then you would get the lake to boil away, right? Removing that threat uh, potential. Well, now we're here and we're still getting this stream just a little bit adjusted, a little bit set up, but yeah, we're, we're in the eruption again. It looks like HVO has marked that there is an eruption on their monitoring map at this point. Nothing special, just that there's an indication there that uh, it's going down. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cycle, cycle through some signals here. The earthquakes were a big, a big part of what tipped us off earlier, right? That something was happening. And um, we'll, we'll look at the, their monitoring page here shortly when I get it loaded up. But that's, now that I got this loaded up here, I'll show you guys. This is just in the past day, these earthquakes, right? So um, most recently, uh, 2.5. I'll skip all the smaller ones. Um, 2.0, 2.2. You guys can kind of see where they light up blue on a screen there. And these are all pretty shallow, uh, either above sea level or just below sea level. There's a 2.4. 2.4. They're kind of uh, extending into the South Caldera as well. I think I got my brush over here. A little South South Caldera, a little Southwest rim, but mostly on a South Caldera wall right in here. Let's see if I can get us to zoom in a little more. Right, so right in here, there's a lot of suspect activity right through there. And no matter where eruption happens along this wall, wherever it happens to be, it's going to pour downhill into this low spot where the lake sits right in here. And that's where the yep. steam's going to be coming from. Right, so it's kind of hard to see what's happening behind the steam, where exactly that's, that, that flow of lava is coming from. That's something we'll investigate with you guys here, too. So, right, um, that's the, the suspect spot right now is just look where the earthquakes are focusing. Right. So really quick here, here's our our tilt the past two days. I'm just going to give it a reload. So you can see in the past two days here, we're basically flat. You know, you actually could say, well, you know, we had been, if we look at the past week here, in this deflation, inflation cycle, normally we'd have another deflation right in here. So maybe instead of deflating, we're ha maybe seeing an overlapping signal somewhere in here, but it's kind of not that much. We're talking about three micro radians to to one or maybe you know if you come from the bottom maybe it was like eight micro radian signal it wasn't that big it wasn't as big as the one we saw last week oh yeah um, we've seen a ton of different tilt signals much more significant than this much more ominous than this that did not lead to anything really and now with this little three micro radiant one we're there that's right. one of the interesting things to me right away is like we didn't get the clear tilt signal that they were kind of looking for we didn't get the only real one we had is we had a, uh, the earthquakes again tipping us off, and I don't know if anybody felt it recently. Just like uh, before we went went live, there was a magnitude four point four on the south flank, kind of near the uh, Mauna Ulu, so upper rift area, but definitely south flank earthquake. Uh, it's in the the depth uh, three point five miles depth, which is south flank. Its location and depth indicate south flank activity there. 
And yeah, we're um, into it. So one thing to before we get really into it, this eruption, the way it's looking right now, is not going to be a high threat in terms of damages to property and things like the 2018 eruption, right? The, the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is very remote. It is not surrounded by residential areas. This is in the caldera, so it's thousands of feet below where Ken Boyer is standing, right? So it's a contained event. As of right now, as long as no explosions happen, it will be small. The, the biggest threat to people from this eruption as it looks right now would be an overreaction of some kind. People like, oh my God, we got to evacuate uh, Ocean View. Well, no, 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 no. Right, we're having we have activity in in Kilauea Caldera, right? That doesn't involve the rest of the island, but we did we couldn't we couldn't get through 2020 without at least one eruption like that. Just <laughs> we couldn't do it. We almost did it. We had 11 days to go, and here we are. But yes, yeah, it does. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so the HVO homepage right here. You guys can see we got a little red exclamation point in Kilauea, so we jumped right up there to the red. From green to red in a blink of an eye. I think we were talking about how that wasn't a great strategy. Right here. Back. I mean, <laughs> just saying. There's, there's been a notice by HVO. I can read it out to you guys here. Go for it. So... Shortly after approximately 9.30 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time, the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory detected glow within Hale Ma'uma'u Crater at the summit of Kilauea Volcano. An eruption has commenced within Kilauea's summit caldera. The situation is rapidly evolving, and HVO will issue another statement when more information is available. So, accordingly, HVO has elevated Kilauea's volcano alert war uh, level to warning in its aviation color code to red. So aviation code is different from the actual hazard code of people, right? There's a two different color codes here. Aviation being, you know, obviously for aircraft, right? And so what they're worried about now is a threat of possible explosions and ash getting into the atmosphere. Um, it's purely pre precautionary, I'm sure, because we've discussed it at length. We don't see any signs of anything like that happening. At the moment, yeah. it looks like a fairly passive steam cloud, right? Just like an ocean entry, like you'd see, right? Or one, one, like one, Green one, Mountain. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Green Lake, Mountain. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Same um, type of situation. And it's just, you know, we're not going to harp on it too much, but there's a certain uh, I told you so factor going on with this uh, ele the alert level. Because uh, we were talking about how the you don't want to go from green to orange. That's how you, you didn't do it right, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> like, I mean... Now, yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of discussed what, what was the actual measuring stick, but the fact that they actually put it to a red now, right, you know, and, and that kind you of just, proves what, what you're saying before is that, you know, if you're going to make it red on eruption, then you could go in between because you essentially had a, had a mini almost eruption last week, and then here it is, yeah. like the second pulse of it, um, wedging that likely that very same crack open, right? That's why we suspect that's the kind of near that Silver Banks area and the South Cutter Wall, somewhere where eruption actually happened. Um, so that's that's yeah. uh as expected right and so to kind, of, to kind of recall for you guys you know just real briefly you can bring up more data later on as we kind of you know get further into this but after the 1924 explosion and collapse there were uh, uh, a series of something like seven eruptions over the next nine years and all of them were like less than two weeks sometimes only a few hours and so we'll see how long this actually lasts if it's a few yeah. hours one if it lasts you know how long it actually goes on it may only be a few hours it may go on a few days it might go on a few weeks, but, you know, possibly not longer than that. You know, we'll see how it actually goes. This is a whole new chapter. No one's ever seen exactly this kind of recovery from a collapse before. Although we have a lot of missing um, information from the collapses that happened in the 1800s. And, you know, um, yeah. so that's it where we are now. Easy, it wasn't an easy challenge to do the first ever green to yellow transition on Kilauea. But by not doing it, here you are. You went from green to red. Right. And now the, you have no precedent for next time. <laughs> like it's already to get sidetracked, but uh, I was hoping to be wrong on that one, kind of. You know, like just yeah. us beating the drum and then them being like, "Oh, see, we told you that nothing would happen." Right. But yes, 
Uh, one person is, let's, I'm going to jump, jump into chat real quick. This is happening at Green Lake Negative. This is happening at Holly Mau Mau at the Kilauea Summit in the Volcano National Park. Not Green Lake. Green Lake gone. Green Lake's gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that was 2018. It went away. So we had a second lake come back up, right? We had we had two lakes before the 2018 eruption on the island. And then we went down to one lake. Then we went back up to two lakes when the, the lake in Holly Mau Mau appeared. And it looks like we're back down to one. Uh, it's, it's incredibly fast, the, the changes on this island. I'm going to try something here, you guys. Are we going to make our way out there? No, we're not. We're not going to make our way out there. We're going to keep the stream up and live and we're going to go through what information we can get. Um, Ken Boyer, one of our partners from the 2018 eruption, is live up there. It's his feed that we're uh, we're bringing through and showing you right now the middle one with the actual action happening. And that's a that's a live shot. But yeah, we're gonna kind of keep the stream up for a few hours and see what's uh, what develops, right? Because these eruptions, we this one type of eruption, you there's a lot of unknowns still, right? Even though we predicted that where it would take place and that it would be in the summit, and we were talking about the right timeline, there's still a lot of unknowns that go into how will this develop, right? What's the sequence that we'll see? We're in the opening phase of whatever is going down, right? And it could easily from here pop its head up, you know, take away the lake, fill in the bottom of the collapse pit, and then quiet back down again, right? It could continue potentially for days to weeks. But as of right now, we just don't know. There's a lot of unknowns about this. And we're kind of, you know, trying to do what a lot of people are doing and it, right now is figure out exactly what's happening right so you've guys are just tuning in just a quick reminder like you know there is an eruption happening at Hale Mau Mau uh, December 20th 2020 um, it is not uh, posing a danger to anybody it looks like it's localized within the caldera it's not a threat to anyone there's people uh, even there watching live streaming the park is aware of the situation you know they can make closures if they choose that's appropriate we're not seeing the signs that we that we, we might have expected to see before, uh, like in a more of an explosive event. So what we're seeing is a passive steaming away of the summit lava lake um, with no threat, right? So it's just kind of we're watching now um, for uh, curiosity and interest, right? We're not watching out of fear for our safety. Just so everyone is clear right. on that. It's worth restating that every probably five or ten minutes, you know. Um, probably. Every, so uh, yeah. one of the questions is that uh, is this Leilani? Or the other place where lava flowed and erupted, uh, or no. and the other place where the lava flowed and erupted. Say, so I'm uh, probably a few hundred yards when I'm right now sitting here talking to you. A few hundred yards from Fisher Eight, the previous 2018 eruption site. Nothing going on. I didn't see nothing. Didn't feel, you know? Don't smell anything out of the ordinary. It's not here, right? It's all up at the caldera right now which is good that's if we had to pick a place on this island for an eruption to take place it would be inside the caldera of holly mau mau it's the safest place for an eruption to happen let's see if i can tr show you guys here just out of scientific cur curiosity a little more about these earthquakes if i kind of we're gonna do a plot here Trying to navigate kind of skinnier windows than I'm usually working with here. So this is the HVO monitoring map, and we're gonna look at the earthquakes across the caldera here. I'm gonna view this plot. Okay, so it's kind of see if I can zoom in here for you guys. All right, so on this on this plot, the axis going left to right this way, that's time, right? So like we're right over here, that's current, current time. And this is actually a depth, so you can't quite see off the top of my screen. Right up here is the surface. This is the surface of the Earth. Um, this may actually be zero kilometers uh, sea level. And then, looks like maybe one kilometer below sea level. Let me check that. Actually, no, that's two miles below sea level. 
So what you can see here is a pattern of earthquakes that's coming from this one is 0.9, about a mile below sea level. Going to this this uh, last big one was 0.2 miles above sea level, right? So you can kind of see there's a big pat a pattern going from not exactly in order, but kind of connecting from deep all the way to shallow. We have earthquakes happening. So sh there's a there's a, a cluster of earthquakes both in time going this way, right? And then like a progression with depth right there. And if you were to look at this on the actual map, which is where we just were, then you can see oh, that there's a clear clustering in space as well, right in there. Well, the closer we go in, we can kind of see it's a little, little fuzzier, but if anything, the cluster is going to be right in here, right? It seems like this, this kind of area right in here. So we had um, our earlier USGS Volcano Watch. Let's see if I can find that again. Um, back over here, yeah. This one, right, with this map of what happened last week, the Kilauea Summit. All right, so maybe we can kind of put this up here and compare it, right, to where earthquakes are happening now. Yeah, so last week, that that plot, the that area of Dyke is being drawn right in here. All right, that's their rectangle is kind of right in there. Came so we're right seeing it, it looks like. We're seeing it a little bit more to the left, right? So it could yeah. be that this is a crack, that's the that caldera ring fault like this. And it could be that the lava starts at depth over here, and it's working its way uphill through the crack, and actually coming out somewhere over here, and then pouring down into the hole. Something seems, like that. Seems like an educated guess right now. That would be an educated um, guess, yeah, until we get more information of what's happening over I'm there. I'm also going to put out an educated guess that USGS's server is getting swamped right now, because that thing is running like a dog. <laughs> like for me at least it is struggling to pull simple jpeg images <laughs> yeah everybody's probably on there like what's happening you know <laughs> but yeah, yeah. we're um here's what you know last week see how big that was and the one today was kind of just you know like yeah. in the last couple of days yeah so even if it went down like this supposedly it's still not as big a gap here to here as we had just last week. So most of the work was done last week. And just as we were broadcasting you guys, you know, just what, four days, three, four days ago, that, that's the story cannot end like that. There's an unfinished chapter of this to be written yet. And here it is. And, you know, it, it's, it's pushed all the way to the surface. That crack that it had wedged into last week on December, maybe two weeks ago now, right? December 2nd. Um, has basically the lava's gone in there, pushed its way across, you know, through it. You know, it's been pushing back and forth as it works its way to the surface. We see that as a series of magnitude two earthquakes. You know, um, I can pull up the list here in, in a little while, but uh, a bunch of magnitude two earthquakes. Um, and as we see from the web uh, visual images here, we have lava at the surface, right, coming into the lake, right. So that's the that's this is Ken Boyer's live feed for anybody who's watching. Um, you can see we also had just had an earthquake on the south flank, but uh, overall we have not had very many earthquakes in the, on yeah, the that's, south flank. I mean, even at the summit, when we were speaking last week about this, uh, what an eruption sequence might look like, we are talking about a thousand earthquakes in a day. We didn't right. see that. Unless we're going to be counting less than 0.7s and, you know, little tiny things as the earthquakes. We only had a, what I'm showing is 140 in the past seven days around the summit. And that including part of the Upper East Rift. So it's it didn't give us the clear, the super clear earthquake signal that we were kind of expecting, but it did give it, the, it still gave us the earthquake signal. It still gave us enough to be able to indicate that something was going to happen or was likely to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, Just, and, the, and the thing, yeah, the thing is every, every eruption is different, right? And like the canvas has like yeah. been reset and like we don't know what we're working with. And, you know, um, as we suspected, the ground was very was very weak there already, right? We always, you know, we've always said that lava is going to try to find its easiest way to the surface, and you know, it's going to be wherever the ground is the weakest. And if the ground is weak and doesn't need to be cracked, then why? why you don't have to have any earthquakes yeah. because it's, you know what the earthquakes are actually happening is perfect magma magma wedging a crack that's already there open. And why yeah. would it be the crack that's already there? It's that same southern caldera crack that we've been suspecting, you know, of you know of of being in the site of eruption for 
first you know, two years since you know right after the eruption mm -hmm. ended. Yeah, yeah. We're one of the first places we were talking about the next eruption potential happening was on the rim of the caldera somewhere, because that's where the fault was. The most clearly identifiable faults were around the rims of the caldera, so it's not really a surprise to see it sneak its way up through there. And that's kind of what it seems like is happening right now. We didn't have a ton of quakes. It found a crack and came up through it, got to the surface. Lake's going away. It was a nice lake while we had it, you know. You know, ripped uh, Holly Mau Mau Lake 2019 to 2020. We, uh, I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't finish out 2020 without an eruption. I mean, it wouldn't be 2020. <laughs> we got everything else. So here we are. And if anybody has anything, you know, any information coming through, we're going to be watching chat to uh, try and keep up. There's going to be some, uh, we're going to be learning with you exactly what's going on. We'll be trying to, you know, inter help interpret what's going down. But in reality, we're still, you know, looking for statements from USGS, a statement from civil defense, a statement from the National Park Service, right, on um, what's the plan? Because you can't tell me that this was, that there was, there is no plan, because this was as expected as you can get almost in terms of, you know, the rough window that we've been talking about that an event would take place in. You can't be precise on it really when you're talking weeks to months out from the event happening, but, you know, you draw a window, you leave it kind of open, and if it happens, then it makes sense why it happened. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. So um, once again, just remind you guys, new eruption at Kilauea, December 20th, 2020, um, shortly after 9.30 p.m. The eruption began, according to USGS's first statement that was issued uh, today, tonight, that we've shown you guys just a little while ago. Um, right now, uh, the park... Um, I have no idea what's happening at the park. I, I'm, not, I'm not actually listening to what's coming through on Ken's live feed. Um, so um, we'll have if, you, if you, any of you guys are listening, um, please feel free to share anything you know with us. We'll just again like 2018, you know, although with less concern for any public safety or any kind of hazard, like we're not worried about people's safety today. We're not worried. You know, this is more of a curiosity and a uh, you know a reconnection to our volcano Kilauea. That's you know showing her face once again here do you know um how often the so2 polling stations pull data um, thing? yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, it's interesting yeah it's interesting we should check that out i think some of those are actually pull every minute or something like that right i mean a lot of the other yeah, ones don't it, it seems like with the line but my point i was just going to get to is it didn't show up at all you couldn't tell anything was going on if you're looking at the SO2 signal that is posted currently. Right. Couldn't tell a thing. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's just another day. And I mean, that's with a lot of the signals. It, it snuck its way through. That's what I'm going to go with is it snuck its way up. Because yeah, it's a interesting. Lot of the signals you're looking for aren't there. They're just not there. Yeah. SO2 is not there. Tilt is like, eh, not really. Yeah. So here's here's um, an interesting GPS. interesting view. Yeah, you guys can see this this uh the before and after picture. So like the, the image below here is is part of the 24 hour image that's trying to load, but it's loading really slow because the USGS websites are getting swamped, as Dane said. And above is a current image right now, right, of the of the the same camera setup, right. So it's hard to kind of superimpose one on the other, right. But you can kind of see. At this edge right over here on the left, that's the same edge right over here, right? So you can we can see glow throughout this entire lower part right through here, right? So there's steam filling that whole lower part of it. I don't see any red anywhere kind of along this upper rim anywhere here to here. So that would lead me to suspect that maybe it's not coming in from this upper cliff at all, but actually it's coming in from somewhere below, right? Maybe, maybe it's able to push through the rubble, right? Because this lower crack, this lower image, this crack is this wall we're looking at right here. And that wall is a cliff, and the cliff goes down all the way like in a triangle like that, right? So it could have just come right. through the bottom part. 
Go ahead, Dan. Break. So Civil Defense put out a message. I'm going to go ahead and read it now. This is a local earthquake message for Sunday, December 20th. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory reports an eruption at the Holly Mountain Mile crater of the Kilauea Volcano. Trade winds will push any embedded ash towards the southwest, which is the predominant winds. Fallout is likely in the Kau District in Wood Valley, Pahala, Naalehu, and Ocean View. Stay indoors and, expo and avoid exposure to ash. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center reports the earthquake, which occurred at approximately 10.36 p.m., the one that we felt just before we went live, in the vicinity of the south flank of Kilauea was not large enough to cause a tsunami for the island of Hawaii. I say again, there is no tsunami threat to the island of Hawaii. You're not going to get a tsunami with a 4.4, really, but anyways. Preliminary data indicates that the earthquake measuring the magnitude of 4.4 was centered in the vicinity of the south flank of Kilauea. As in all earthquakes, be aware of the possibility for aftershocks. If the earthquake was strongly felt in your area, precautiously precautionary checks should be made for any damages, especially to, to utility connections of gas, water, and electric. Um, yeah, so they're, they're playing it safe. Let's just go with that. They're playing it safe right now. Um, advisory, advising uh, ash fallout in Kau makes sense. You know, even when we were getting the 30,000 foot ash cloud in 2018, when the summit collapse explosions were going on, when it was still a collapse explosion, right? We were having 30,000 foot ash uh, plumes and that was only dusted, dusted Kau. You know, it'd be like a light snow type of thing where it just, you know, a few flakes remain in the morning you know wasn't the um the doomsday scenario a lot of people think it is in you know some ways a lot of people are like oh explosive eruption their mind immediately goes to mount saint helens and that eruption and we have to just you know come back and say no 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 much different than that hey yeah phillips uh Got a phone call. We might end up jumping in and out of this stream as information comes in, as we're trying to coordinate with other people that we work with and, go and, with. and we're going to just, you know, try and keep this stream coming to you live. Okay. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm in Leilani Estates, the, well, let me get this down, 2018 okay. eruption site. And it's, it's quiet here. Okay. Up at the summit, there's, okay action going down uh but again it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a very hazardous event this is confined to the Hawaii volcanoes national park in the caldera of holly mau mau probably one of the best places in terms of you know a person's impact you know it's going to have the least impact inside that caldera as long as it doesn't go uh, boom boom and uh, you know ash explosions which does not look to be the case right now. We see that steam coming off of the cow, uh, out of the caldera, out of the uh, collapse pit, and that seems to indicate that the you know the lake is boiling away. The lake is going to be gone. So we're just you know continuing to go through what uh, data we have, and uh, my phone has been blowing up for the past two hours with people, you know, holy Mount Mount is going down, you know. It, it is happening. There is an eruption. We did get the eruption that we were talking about for the past few weeks. And here we are. We are waiting to see, you know, what happens next. Uh, we've already had a couple big earthquakes that I felt. And we've had people reporting other earthquakes that they felt. Nothing huge right now. The biggest is still, what, a 4.4? Right. And the 4.4 actually wasn't under the summit. It was under, under the south flank. Um, right. And then under the south flank, kind of near Mana Ulu, right? Near Mana Ulu, maybe a little bit towards the Pu'o'o area, right? Um, but not not uh, not anywhere far, further down towards the Lower East Rift Zone. Lower East Rift Zone looks looking totally in a clear at this point in time, right? Um, there's no indication that this is going to do any, anything beyond pass through the summit. We have to always wait and see, you know, what the volcano does. You know, um, the pathways are always there, but it doesn't look like there's any, any reason for it to go anywhere out of, except the hole it's already found, come out of the ground already. So there it is, right. um, coming out of the ground. 
Um, sorry, guys, I had to step away for a phone call. Um, the, the civil defense message men mentioned Ash for Pahala, right? So, um, yeah, we had a message from Ikeka Marzo saying that he's going to be passing out masks in Pahala tomorrow um, in case there are any more Ash, Ash concerns for anyone who's uh, downwind at eruption, uh, eruption over there. However, there are no reports of Ash so far that we've heard. Have you seen anything about that, Dane, in the chat? Has anything come across? Not yet. All right. So, yeah, I really, don't really think there's going to be any ash unless, you know, the, the, the civil defense message mentioned embedded ash, right? So maybe there's just like, there's a lot of ash in the area. That whole pit is a bunch of just powdered rock. And at some point, ash is just powdered rock. And so if the, if the steam can carry it out, maybe you get some ash, you know, just in the steam, like wet steam, right? We talked, there, there, there was a... Right. I think you're going to get a <clears throat> steam rain or ash rain where it gets, you know, trapped in the, the evaporating lake gets carried up into our already heavy, you know, it's already stormy out there. So once it starts raining, it's just going to come down with the rain, whatever right. is out there that's uh, coming up. Because really right now in the live, live stream, we don't see the uh, a big, you know, ash plume. We see a lot of steam, a lot of steam, but we're not there yet. And hopefully, you know, we get through the night, the lake's gone by morning, and there's no, uh, you know, big ash deposits made or ash anything made. That's kind of the big hope right now is uh, just don't go ash, you know, everything. Right. Doesn't look like like, like that's going to be the case, right? So that's kind of our main message today is that, you know, there is there is an eruption of Halimamau happening. Um, it appears to be a small event, very localized to the summit so far not even posing any danger to anyone, even in a national park at this point, right? So there's definitely no, no danger to anyone anywhere else on the island, especially in Lower Puna. Um, that's the main thing there. Um, so uh, uh, you can guys can see the, the live stream from Ken Boyer is up here in the top, top center left. Um, we have the USGS webcam over here in the top right. This is the one that actually normally shows the, 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 the lake at the bottom. So we're not seeing the lake. We're just seeing like a big glow of looks like glowing steam. Um, we don't see any red anywhere along the upper rim anywhere around here, right? So it makes us suspect that lava maybe is coming in, th maybe pushing through all that ash and rubble kind of at the base of that cliff over there somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. And it's filling in the bottom bottom of the crater there, right? Even on Ken's picture over here, I don't really see any sign of any, any, any glow anywhere with except within that pit under that cliff, right? Mm -hmm. So... Kind of hard to see, obviously, in the dark. Um, it's been kind of rainy. You know, you guys can see that from Ken's view up there. There's kind of some low clouds, but he's actually getting a pretty good view looking down underneath that under here. And actually, one of the things he mentioned before I, I cut off his sound, and, you know, much mahalo is for Ken for being there and live streaming and for us uh, uh, letting us use his feed here. He was talking about the moon bows, right? There's a, a the mist is there and the moon is out. And, you know, in some of the earlier oh, yeah, yeah. pictures, the moon is out kind of back over here. And you can see the moon shining through the mist and creating a moon bow. That's kind of making it a really magical uh, uh, thing that doesn't really show up on a camera, right? Especially on kind of Facebook Live kind of thing. So, yep. There's uh, just going through chat. Is this Leilani? Nope. It is the summit of Kilauea in the Caldera in the national park. So long, uh, you know, good of a distance away from Leilani as far as it, you know normally be but yes one of the questions we have here is um how long will do we expect the eruption to take place yeah that's a great question you know um these eruptions can range in time let, let me just get grab my book here and i'll tell you what happened in 1924 just a second right All so right. the there best way to the best way to look at a lot of these situations is to look at the historical record of similar situations that we have access to because our data really doesn't go back that far right for a lot of things you're talking about you know like the modern measuring tools like the gps and tilt meters those highly sensitive tilt meters we're talking maybe 10 20 years Just for gas measurements maybe 30 but that's a blink of an eye in the terms of a volcano especially when we know that you know 1790 uh, 1500 1790 had an explosive period on Kilauea, which we have no experience of in modern era, right? So looking back at like 1924, which Phil's pulling up, really helps you gauge, you know, the potential from here. 
Yeah, so here's here's the info. And this, this is, uh, what I'm reading from is I'm reading from the USGS 200 years of magma transport and storage. This is their professional paper 1806-6344. So, uh, direct quote here. In the decade following a 1924 collapse, Kilauea erupted seven times at the bottom of a newly deepened Hale Ma'uma'u crater. Uh, there were eruptions that were more more voluminous than others, and those happened um, not the very first one, right? So, in fact, the very first one was 1927. Um, actually, no, that's not true. But there, uh, there, there was one in 20 from 20 after 25, because there, there was one I think nine months after the pit actually formed, right? 1924 still. But after that little little peak up, the next one, 1927, it's about the same timeline as we are as we are now, right? Um, not exactly. That was three years after them, so we're kind of two, two, two years ish. But that one was a thirteen-day eruption um, in Hale Mau Mau. No precursory seismicity, um, which might be something you know that we, you know, I don't know, what we call precursory seismicity. We've been talking about earthquakes for the last month on our feed ourselves, so you know it depends kind of how you how you measure it, especially since in those times you couldn't really have, you didn't have as many people, you didn't have as much coverage, no seismometers, if the earthquake wasn't big, big enough to be felt, um, then you really couldn't count it, and even then you maybe couldn't locate it unless we actually had, right. yeah, we had, the, we had the Whitney vault with the, you know, the, um, the Bosch and Mori uh, tilt meters that were installed in there that kind of can act as kind of quasi seismic, definitely pick up earthquakes. Um, but it likes you know one instrument and it's kind of sense you know it's, it's sensitive in certain ways and not sensitive in others right so <coughs> that's kind of kind of what we're where we're coming from there yeah so right and this type of eruption you know we don't know exactly how long it's going to go but it seems like it'd be a short-lived one if you're gonna place money on it that's where my money would be is in the shorter time scale. Just because that's what uh, we've seen, you know, like one of the ones we were talking about following the 2018 eruption was the eruption of 1840, the summit collapse that happened then, the East Rift Zone uh, eruption that took place uh, that coincided with it. And from there, it really, we were, uh, one of the things we kept talking about was how the not long after the collapse happened, by the time the first photo that or map of the area had been made, Following that eruption, it had already the, the pit had already been filled in with another eruption, right? So it had a small eruption, and then it had several other ones over the next several years, right? Several small eruptions inside the caldera, and they were short lived. And it's kind of hard, or really hard, to know exactly how long they lasted. I mean, some of these events, if they took you know only a few hours, the eruption was only a few hours. That area wasn't, you know, very well monitored, you know, not that long ago. So something could slip by, a small eruption, and people would find out about it later. But here we are, you know, now we have live streaming, and we're sitting here talking to you, looking at one of our friends up there who's, you know, on the scene. We're sitting at, I'm sitting in uh, by Fisher 8. Phillip's also near Volcano few miles out so we're yeah. here we, we we know like the feeling of being on the you know on the volcano while it's erupting go ahead so i was gonna, I was gonna give you guys a little more information that i have, have better information here in front of me 1924 the, the the first eruption afterwards was actually a few months afterwards that was 11 days eruption the next one three years later 13 days eruption the one after that 1929 was only two days then right. 29 happened again, uh, another four days. Um, so, I don't know, together in 29, six days all together over the whole year. 1930 was 19 days all at once. 1931 was 14 days all at once. 1934, 33 days all at once. And that, after that, it had a long break, 1952. Um, so that was that was the seven eruptions within the next 10 years after 24. And after that, it basically had another 18-year slumber um, at the summit. So, you would guess based on, you know, if you were going to just guess on these numbers, you might guess somewhere in a range of 10 to 14 days, I would say, right? Um, yeah. but, but certainly, um, two days is in, a, is in a range of possibilities, a few hours is in a range of possibilities, right? One thing that happened a lot, a lot of times in the Upper East Rift Zone um, during, the upper, during the magma refilling era, kind of before Pool became a long, long, 
lasting event on a rift zone was that you'd have a few hour eruptions, lots of small ones, a little bit on the rift zone here, a little rift zone there, and you'd have kind of more frequently, but then smaller ones. Um, so that's really the thing, depending on how much lava comes out. If it's like a, you know, a smaller one, it could be a shorter one and we could have another one in a few months, um, or it could be a slightly longer one and it could be another year until it does something similar again. But the point is, as Dana said earlier, like this pit always refills, you know, that's what we always, always said, you know, that, um, as soon as, as the eruption was over in 2018, we said the most likely place was the summit, the very bottom of the pit, you know, um, evaporating away this lake, likely not explosive. And that's exactly what we have going on here. So, I mean, you know, we don't have to have anything new to explain because it's the same explanations we've been saying. And we're happy to, to kind of recap those, right? Every eruption in Hawaii comes up through the water table, right? Even Leilani has water soaked in the ground and so eruption comes up through water there and you saw all the steaming beforehand, you know, um, Kapoho, um, 1960, right? Um, you actually even had some seawater involved. You had, you had salt falling out from the air there, right? You know, and there was some kind of more explosive events there. But even still, it wasn't, you know, um, didn't get as far runaway as maybe our worst case situation is, you know, something like 1790, the summit or Pukapoho, like when you have like big tephra cones, you know, that from seemingly really big explosions. So there's no sign of that happening right now. Of course, eruption could shift to a new phase. If something were to change, like a bigger earthquake that would allow a lot more magma to come up quickly. You know, we don't see any signs of that right now. Um, the earthquakes, in fact, um, we can look at them again. Um, let's see what's going on here with the earthquakes. Earthquake Question. visible. So we had a question for you from chat when you're ready. Okay, but yeah, so just just kind of just kind of kind of recap this. Like the last, we, we, there was a zero point seven on a chart at eleven o two, and there is a two point two at ten thirty three, right? So that would kind of indicate that the earthquakes are slowing down. There is not much reason for more earthquakes. That you know the path is established. Lava is coming out of the ground, right? Now we can probably look at the at the um, seismographs and see the harmonic tremor. What's so? Uh, let's go to the question now. How do you count the? 1983 eruption do you just count that as volcanic activity or as continuous eruption so poo -oh -oh. um i i kind of as as continuous eruption you know um there actually were pauses of several weeks during eruption but they could they call them just that pauses because the the, the actual reason for it happening the, me the mechanism um did not change uh, let's see our energy is having uh, energy, the video is having some issue there so, okay, um, I'm kind of scanning our Kilauea seismographs here. And what I see is over here at outlet. Oh, cut this on here. At the outlet vent, we can see here go to a 12 hour, 12 hour plot. And wait for the server to respond here. All right, so we can see twelve nineteen. This Ken is... is charging his battery. Oh, okay, that was one of the yeah. That was one of my things. It's like uh, I look, you know, people start calling me like, "Yo, yo, yo, there's stuff going down." I looked at my phone battery; and it was like thirty percent, which is maybe like an hour worth of activity before it's dead. It's like okay, yeah. I mean, me being up there ain't probably gonna help <laughs> at all, considering I'm not gonna have any tech with me. Yeah, Ken's yeah. streams down. He's going to be charging. Um, if anybody finds another live, right, somebody else that's up there, please drop it in the chat. We'll check it out. Um, yeah. We don't expect it to be much of a different angle. That's kind of the only angle that's going to exist, really, unless USGS goes out there and pulls something. Oh, yeah, Brad sure. Lewis is in chat. Hey, Brad. You know, good to hey. Shout out to Brad. Brings yeah. a yeah, it takes an eruption on Kilauea, then Brad's like, oh, yeah. my spidey yeah. senses were tingling. It's three in the morning where I'm at, but I, I felt it. <laughs> so let's see if I can find another stream for you guys here. Just you know, give me a second to kind of look up here what's going on. And I'm sure that there are a few others going on. I saw a few others happening already. So but let me see what I can find here for you guys. And maybe Dan, you can give us a recap recap of what's happening for people who are just joining now um, and uh, what concerns there are or not. Yeah, maybe. So, uh, recap. Sorry, I was checking. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe quick, uh, quick, quick recap. Yeah, so we had at 
around 9.30 tonight, uh, beginning of a eruption sequence uh, at the same place that on December 2nd, a magma intrusion happened. And we had a, about 100 to 150 earthquakes leading into the eruption, which is on the low side. And then we had magma come up inside the crater or inside the caldera of Kilauea Volcano inside the national park, right? So it's away from populated areas. And since then, we've been watching the, the lake, the water lake that had formed over the past year and a half, two years, and uh, Holy Mount Mau, we're watching it disappear, right? We had, uh, we had a, in 2018, we had a, a lava lake that went away. We went to eruption sequence. Lava came down Leilani Estates, down the Lower East Rift Zone. End of, uh, in August, or the, yeah, August 2018, the eruption came to an end. Since then, we've been kind of waiting and watching to see what's happening. And then tonight, earthquakes happen. No real tilt signal, no real other signals, and magma comes to the surface. We get glow again. Right now, there is no significant threat to uh, people. It's mostly confined within the Volcanoes National Park. There might be some ash that gets sprinkled downwind uh, in some deposit, an unknown amount in the Pahala, Nalehu, Wood Valley areas. So downwind of the summit. The same places that got the dusting of ash in 2018 from the collapses, they're the same ones that are, if they're, if it, if they're gonna get it again, it will be them that get it again. So and one of the things that we don't see is significant signals, right? We don't see a, a, a lot of the signals that we'd actually be looking for, they're not here, like an SO2 signal. Well, we have SO2 monitoring access and it didn't pick it up, right? We have tilt. Well, the tilt really didn't, you know, we've had other events happen, many other events happen that were larger in terms of change than this. But here we are, we got an eruption inside the caldera. That's kind of a brief recap. Kind of going through and seeing what we got. It looks like John's live up there. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to get the uh, internet to respond quickly here. I'm having a little issues. It doesn't say that you're dropping frames. You've dropped no frames so far. Yeah, not coming out, coming in, right? I'm just like my, my Facebook's not responding very well. And oh yeah. Um, that's right. We can we can um, we can recap the signals that are happening still too. Um, let me just uh. By the way, civil defense says no th tsunami threat. That could be like a motto for them. Just saying, like a three O happens and they're like, no tsunami threat. It's like, yeah, no kidding. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, well, yeah, I mean, just, tsunami threat normally gonna have to have, have a six and a half or higher, right? You know, what the thing is, people people feel it on an island, they get worried about it, and you know, that that might be kind of one concern, right? You know, but they're kind of ignoring the issue that. The eruption might be the thing that actually triggers a PTSD here rather than the actual tsunami, right? It's been, you know, um, right. So, That's what we're talking you know. about. I mean, a lot of people out here we've seen after the eruption, the the like literally in Leilani Estates near the 2018 eruption site, the weather will change. We'll get some rain. The winds will come from the south, and people will be like, "Yo, yo, yo! I smell this. I smell the gas again. What's happening?" Right. So people are still on edge from 2018. All it takes is just a little thing to, you know, trip it up and send them back a little bit. We were there. We, you know, we went through it, too. But it's. It's different when you're not. Paying attention as much. Right. You just you're just uh, casually going about your day and then you catch that whiff of FO, SO2 and it brings your mind back to what it was like. So here's, you know, 
here we are. We're doing a live of the eruption that's taking place in the Kilauea caldera. We're going to be saying that a lot just to, you know, rehash because we've got people coming and going from the stream. And we're going to be online for probably a while now. Um, you know, I, I stay up late, so you're going to probably be staying up late with me. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys got, got a thermal, thermal image up here in the middle. Um, you guys can see that. Um, that's what, what it looks like from our F1 cam. One thing we got look, uh, to look forward to, normally we'd say it around midnight, right? We'll have to see how the how the servers respond here from the USGS, but um, normally we have a refresh of this last 24-hour image uh, every midnight or so after every midnight. <laughs> we'll compile a new image. Um, so we'll see if that actually, uh, one that actually posts, we can see the, the capture of when this actually began, right? We didn't, I did not actually have uh, recordings of, of the start of this event yet, but they are being captured by USGS and I'm sure they'll have, um, other more, um, better releases than what's available on the web even, right? Because even these GIFs are only like one frame an hour, right? And so they have cameras yeah. going on all the time. They have things, you know, recording in real time. They don't always stream everything, all the data they get. They might stream just like, you know, enough so you can see what's going on. Um, so um, that's that's kind of what, what's what's happening there, right? So um, check KW cam. KW cam. The KW up. cam is the I believe it's the one I have right here on the right. That's uh, at the top right. It's showing a glow, and on the bottom is showing the the loop from the last twenty four hours before this eruption. Up here in the kind of center top left, uh, this is the the. Ooh. Last 24 I, hours before. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to check the KW cam because that is not the one that I'm seeing. The one I'm seeing is in color, not black and white. Okay. And it does look like there is a fountain of some kind going on. Where is there? It's hard to tell, but there is some... And again, the, the the server is of USGS is just getting basically DDoSed by people being like, "What's happening with the volcano?" Looks like you have a few really bright spots in there. Man, it's the, watching images load like this takes me back to the 56k modem days. You know, it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> this camera in the top center here is the one that was put, pointing right across the, to, at that far uh, yellowish sulfur spot, right? So we don't really see that much glow coming from that camera. That's interesting. And yeah, over here on the right, that's the uh, KW cam right there. Let's see if I can get it, get it to reload, right? So, um, I have, can you have this take the screen here? DDoS, you just gave away your generation and hobbies a little bit. <laughs> All right, so okay, this is this is actually quite interesting to see what we're seeing right here in this in this image, right? So KW cam. There was another sulfur spot over here in this area, right? So we're seeing this is a, a spot on the upper rim outside of the lake. The lake is actually down here in this region down here, right? So this is up here as an, on a wall of the crater. This looks to be like the east wall. And it does appear to be the shape of possibly a fountain right in here. So a small fountain and maybe maybe something that's been growing. And it's pouring down into here, looks like. Oh, I actually can see a little vent even over here, perhaps. Right. Right. And then um, in the bottom, so, you got some glow, too, coming in. Yeah, possibly from down here, right? This area right in here. So lots of potential kind of, candidates. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because, yeah, that it, from this angle, it actually looks like it, like it is coming more on this side, right? Which would be the kind of eastern side of the crater, which is actually more where the magma chamber 
um, is thought to be is more in this direction, right? Although we thought that the actual dike intrusion that happened two weeks ago was more in this direction. Although it's all kind of one big magma body underneath the whole thing, so it really can come up through any of the cracks, and the whole thing is busted up after 2018. So looks right. like here's our here. This may be our fountain right here. One of them, the biggest one, you can kind of see. There might be one kind of down in here too. There's a little bit of glow. Looks like there's a little river of lava that's kind of flowing down like this, right? And then down here too. And it looks like this is mostly lava right here, already right now. Right, so it's glowing. And it's like that it seems too bright to be water. All through here, it looks like it's lava already. Right, so there's a little bit of a darker patch through here. I don't know if that's still steaming water or what, but there's kind of, you know, kind of grayish zones. You can kind of see the edge of the pit over here. This may just be, this may be steam coming off the water right here, actually, huh? The steam cloud. Yeah. That's rising up and kind of going all the way over here. Blocking the right? cam. A there's bit. a steam cam. There's all steam over here. So there it is. Somebody says that, uh, I feel like I'm watching play by play and, uh, on football while drawings, uh, but it's appreciated. Well, we've learned from John Madden. Right, he taught us how to use the pen, <laughs> and we've been, you know, paying homage to him with it ever since. Um, yeah, you know, we just use it for slightly different purposes. You know, we use it for monitoring volcanoes. He did it, you know, in order to beat the the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's check this out from this this angle right here, right now. That camera is over here at the Jagger Museum, Wickahuna Bluff, right here. This right. area, right in here, and it is looking in. Uh, this direction like this right so we're talking about something on this wall that high fountain might have been an area right around here we talked about a little vent somewhere right in here and it looked like there might have been something else happening along this wall over here too right so you can see how this compares to the rectangle the other day a couple weeks ago more in here so that might be the, it might not mean it actually be the same crack in that sense right it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on there and you know certainly it's until the until the steam clears and daylight breaks and we have better pictures and all that kind of thing. You know, we'll have to kind of guess at that, but this is our best guess right now is looking at that image. It appears like something is happening on this wall, possibly over here and right over here. I'll switch back so you guys can see. Yeah. Let's label these, right? This might be point A, right in there. This one right in here could be B. This one over here could be C, right? And so let me go back and I'll put an A right in here. I'll put a B in here. I'll put a C over here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. All right, so that's that's in the park right there. So that's our KW cam, and yeah, we'll be interested to see if uh, we can get a an animation here, right? So this same view in the daytime but, you know, yeah. looks like that, right? So to kind of compare, we're talking about that fountain A being some, somewhere over here. You kind of see this kind of steam bank area right in here. It's always been kind of sulfur. This was an area that first started showing sulfur right after, after we saw the lake, right? It's always been a kind of a, a, a weakness. I expected this is like a crack that goes down this way, right? It connects to that very deepest pit of collapse. This is kind of the edge of the, the of Hale Mau Mau inner crater, the deepest pit of collapse, right? The kind of throat of the volcano. Whereas there's an outer step that kind of collapses a smaller amount over here, the main crack that goes down is this closer one over here, right? So lots of yellow sulfur we saw around the vent right in the area over here would indicate a lot of um, uh, a pathway from a magma gas to escape most directly, right? So that would be the easiest place, place for the magma to come out as well. And that fountain A looked like it might have been over here. The B was somewhere right in here, and the C was kind of below the rim, somewhere right in here. And you guys can see the shape of the lake go ahead Dane then D would be the area of the rectangle because as Jennifer points out that is where it looks like it is on uh, Ken's stream right now we're working off a of very you know blurred footage and trying yeah. to figure out where it is um, until morning happens and somebody can do an overflight and check it out the nice thing is is that there are the old flight restrictions that you know in 2018 prohibited flights over the caldera those no longer are in effect so somebody like bruce omari and uh nick calber might do a flyover tomorrow not putting any pressure on them but they might <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah and if you have they a free seat let us know 
Yeah, if there's a free seat, uh, if Scott uh, Wigger or uh, <laughs> Scott Wilson is watching, if you got a free seat and you're flying tomorrow, let us know. Um, <laughs> we'll probably be messaging a few pilots, being like, "Hey, um, what are you doing?" <laughs> So uh, the people who are watching this eruption um, are probably watching it from one of two locations, right? Um, the Jagger Museum right now, this location, the webcam is, is actually closed to the public. So I'm sure that there are park, park staff over there right now and probably geologists as well. But the furthest you can get is actually the Kilauea Overlook, which is somewhere in an area right in here. Right, so you can kind of stand over here and look in. That's one location to look. People could also be walking along from the KMC in this direction, right? The probably best view probably is from over here. Although I'm not sure uh, where the park has uh, restricted access at some point. You can expect the access to probably, probably diminish in the park. Um, I'm not sure when, how. I'm not sure. You know, We have a new park superintendent. We have a new uh, director of HVO. Um, so we'll see how, that, how they actually... We have a new mayor. All that. See how all that plays out. Um, how we manage this, this uh, situation now, right? There's clearly no, no threat to people. Um, it looks like it's a fairly passive eruption, you know, um, so we're just showing you guys uh, for, for uh, curiosity um, as well as for information, right? So you guys know that there's nothing to worry about here. There's nothing to worry right, about. So pull up uh, Kaika's uh, got a just went live up at the Caldera. Okay. So we can pull that stream in. Lots of people he's saying up there. Which is one of the things, like, guys, just, you know, no need to really go up there. That's the only way we could really create a hazard up there is by overwhelming the area with people while the ongoing event is happening. We can watch it on the stream, watch a Kaika stream, watch our stream, and we'll get to the what we can figure out, what footage we can find. You're really not, there is no great vantage point of this thing. If you go up there, you're just going to see that the sky is orangish. And that there's steamish coming off the uh, out of the ground. That's going to be about it. Um, so really, you know, do yourself a favor, stay home tonight, and check it out in the you know the morning when we get the footage, or just stay with us, and you know, we'll keep going. You know, the play by play on what this event is doing. So we're kind of watching with you. All right, we got Kaika's live right here on the left. And hold on, let me resize my windows here. All right, you guys. So recapping, we have an eruption in Hale Mau Mau, Kilauea Caldera. It is no hazard to anybody. We have uh, Ikeka Marzo's live stream here in center. Um, earlier we had Ken Boyer. Appreciate those guys streaming and being part of the team here to uh, um, help us get information to the people. We have over here on the right the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory KW Cam Live Panorama, where we can actually zoom in and see a little bit more information. A little bit more information here. Price is a better angle um, because this is a camera that's on a west west rim of uh, the crater, like beyond a Jagger Museum. Probably actually, this one is actually, huh? Now that I think about it, this is the one that actually can, can look down to the bottom and see the lake. So I apologize yeah. for that. That I misspoke on that earlier. So let me kind of correct that here. Going back to this map. I believe that camera is probably more in an area in here or in he maybe even up in here somewhere like that, right? Where you have a more direct view down past this kind of block in the foreground and you can kind of see in to see the lake of water at the bottom. So right in there. So the ca one camera is here, right? That's this uh, KW cam. This one right here. Another camera at the Jagger Museum over here. That's some of these other cams right here. I don't know this one. This one is another another version of KW cam up here. Let's take a quick peek at our tilt here. See what the tilt is doing. USGS's webpage. You can see that we have not had any clear giant jump in a tilt signal here today, like we had two weeks ago, right? So the path was open two weeks ago, and we knew that there was another part of the story. We knew from the GPS, which is too soon to tell. GPS only shows up after a few days, right? So we might see something changes tomorrow, but we can tell that before the eruption, the injection two weeks ago, the volcano was inflating, spreading. Its uh, caldera was spreading its length on top, right? Because magma was coming into it, ballooning, 
and the top was spreading apart further apart the edges were going and growing apart that's what this line is measuring right here um, from north to south so it was spreading it spread quite a lot faster right following the actual intrusion happened December 2nd that we talked about in several of our um, streams in the last couple of weeks and since then it's resumed inflating and spreading right it has not stopped if it had stopped we would expect it to be flat but instead it's continued an upward trend showing magma was still coming in a volcano so we knew something else had to had to happen still for it to be over um and so we'll see what it actually looks like but the answer is obvious now that it is in fact um an eruption so let me see what i can what, what other information we can glean here from some of the data streams oh let's see this is not what i want let's go back here let's go back to the hvo homepage here and let's go see if we can find our monitoring link here we go look at that kilaway is it red monolo is it yellow it's the first time we've seen that in 2018. so let's no go comment. to it <laughs> uh, no comment I'm going to go to the monitor. All I'm going to say is it went from green to red, skipping entirely yellow and orange. Yeah. You know, we don't yep. need those anyways. It's either erupting or not erupting. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, we've been here every week give, giving you guys weekly updates. And, you know, we're not here to kind of yeah. necessarily bash, right? But, like, there is a, you know, D Dane is happy to say I told you so. That's <laughs> I, I like the spite remarks and, you know, cracking jokes, so. <laughs> so, um, yeah. what I want here is not showing up. And this is part of this new interface. So here, let me go back here to, this might be what I want. This is a path, past month of data on Kilauea, the earthquakes in the past month. You can kind of see we've clearly had pressurization of the summit right through here. Upper southwest rift, upper southeast rift, right? Earlier we had some of the upper upper east rift, you know, kind of the, the upper middle east rift area. Pu'o'o would be kind of an area somewhere right over here. So kind of all upstream of Pu'o'o, nothing below Pu'o'o or even Pu'o'o itself. And a lot of south line activity on the last week, right? And also some deep earthquakes happening in a feeder we imagined from the deep earthquake zone under Pahala area to Kilauea, right? So um, you can kind of see that earthquake counts have not really peaked in the last couple of days. There's no seismic sign of disruption in the last couple of days. Really, the warning was December 2nd when we also went live to you guys um yep. to show you guys this uh event happening and let me kind of get down here what i'm hoping to find is this so2 plot right our so2 plot and this is somewhere around the summit i'm not sure exactly where but when we only have one station online and this is not showing us any signal of so2 right so interesting this is one of the few times we have not been able to rely on a gas signal um, actually as a precursor to the eruption and that's that may be where the water has the biggest effect on this whole story yeah, that's what I was that's what I was just gonna say is that if you ever wanted to know just how much the water was scrubbing the so2 emissions off of the volcano that water lake this might be the clearest sign like yeah. we know that there should be you know a much higher thousands more ppm and still we're just playing around like with uh, the same signal that we've seen before. So this water lake really masked the SO2 signal because we just don't have it. We just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 kind of something that throws a wrench in our kind of typical process of monitoring, right? You know, I mean, for a long time, I've personally been saying, you know, I want to see the gas. Where's the gas? Like without the gas, I'm not really not sure I can believe the signal. And, you know, I didn't necessarily. And um, clearly the signal was being masked, right? And, you know, all, all those... Um, summit signals especially right we're probably signals of some some interesting you know um phase of a little bit of refilling here a little bit of refilling there this adjustment here a little adjustment there you know we had the kaoiki earthquakes back in october showing that the summit was filling and adjusting and actually influencing mauna loa now we can say that kilauea is like okay if you're not going to go mauna loa it's going to be my turn i'm going next 
and just stepping right in, you know, pressurizing, pushing in, you know, at the at the the crack at the bottom there. And I just here we go. I just realized that Don Swanson was right. Of course, Don Swanson was when right. We, yeah, <laughs> when we were when we were, when we went on a hike with him. We asked him, uh, "So which one's next, Kilauea or Mauna Loa? You know, which one's your money on?" He's just like, "Oh yeah, Kilauea." Yeah, for sure. I really? mean, you know, we get a good point. You know, I mean, and you know, if you were asked, I don't know. I mean, we we kind of wondered if we should ask Vegas. What Vegas would say ba based on a pattern for pattern of you know of how Kilauea and Mauna Loa go back and forth would be kind of one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it would be like, well. Most of the time, your odds are on Kilauea going, and you know, and seven times in the ten years after 1924, it, it came back in and refilled the bottom, right? And so, um, that's a, fa a fascinating that's thing, yeah. Right? You know, I, I wouldn't have been that that far. You know, that's really it was really the smart thing, obviously, right? And that's why Don Swanson's the expert with all the, the experience. Yep. So uh, somebody asked for us to take a quick look at Mauna Loa. See what okay. it's doing. All right, let's see. Um, let me figure out how I'm going to do this here. Um, let's just open. refresh the Kilauea cam. Let me check that out. Well, it's 12.05, so I get time to look for our signals dropping too. So, um, mine will let me have to wait just a minute. Looks like you do have a clear lava flow in there now. Yeah. And it does look to me like potentially your initial A placement was correct. And now we're seeing two flows go into the lake where you have one that's already been going in at the bottom side along the cone, along the rim. And then you can see the other lobe the distal tip looking like it's about to try and peek its way down in there as well. Yep, that one. That's what I see in that picture right now. I don't know. What do you see? Yeah, I definitely see that also. What I'm, I, I kind of wonder about this, you know, this part in here, right? And I, I don't think that this is like, this no longer looks like steaming water. This looks like rock, right? This looks like hardened lava already in here right i think a lot of already went in there and hardened and it's been filling the bottom of that pit and we do have one lava stream clearly coming around here wrapping around this would be the south edge of the caldera over here right wrapping around the south and then we also have one on the north edge and this may be possibly two or three different vents right in here four different vents right kind of feeding down this river into here right and this thing this might be like a surface crust almost, right? And this thing might be pumping underneath here, perhaps. It was what it appears. This one looks like a, like it's still coming in, but it's not clear where it's going to be under that crust as well. It looks like most of the flow, what's keeping an open channel is right through here, right? You guys know that um, lava is always forming a crust, whether it's small flows, but what we're essentially looking at now, this, I am happy. I don't know if I'm happy, but I, I will announce this is the this is a lava lake right in here. This is now a lava lake with a crust forming on a surface right through here, right? Kind of channel is on top, right? It might be very shallow so far, but this is what's happening here. This thing is filling with lava. It appears to me like the water is all gone, like the, the pond of water is all gone. So uh, it looks like today this <laughs> didn't, didn't even last, well, maybe four hours again. Um, it's hard to tell, but I don't see any space for water in there. What do you think, Dane? I don't know. Chris Colby was the one that was in chat sitting there saying, like, the, the lake's gone. The lake's gone. And okay, Chris like Colby. The, lake, the lake's gone. We are, um, I, don't, he, I don't think he's there, but just, you know, checking the KW yeah. cam. Shout out to Chris Colby then. So um, yeah. let's keep this over here. Let me see if I can, maybe in this other one over here, I can get it some Mauna Loa going for you guys. Um. Oh, so it looks like the time lapse of KW Cam is up. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna ignore, ignore mine a little. Yeah, do your thing. A little more. That's gonna have to load still. Yeah, that's.
No, we're we're still gonna get to Mauna Loa. It doesn't look like much is going down outside of the what we talked about in our stream on Thursday. We got continued earthquake activity, continued inflation, but otherwise nothing really. Um, we still have that trend change that we talked about that happened. Uh, oh, when was that? Late October? We'll get to it. We'll go over the data streams from Mauna Loa real quick. Okay, here's Mauna Loa with earthquakes. There are no new earthquakes in Mauna Loa. They're registering on here. Yeah, so let me go to the deformation of Mauna Loa. Deformation of Mauna Loa. The tilt meters look normal, of course, maybe that. GPS looks normal. Five years looks normal. If you might say, well, but Kilauea, I don't have any signals like that either. Okay, let's let's look at something else, Mauna Loa. Let's look at the Mauna Loa summit webcam. Mukua Veo Veo cam. There is a thermal, um, which always shows some red color, but the temperature scale up here is showing four degrees, right? So that's like that's that's really not hot at all. It's, it's cold. It's cold. Yeah, it's and here's a live cam actually from Mauna Loa. I'm gonna zoom in. You can see the glow from Kilauea down here from the oh, Mauna man, Loa camera. Yeah, you guys can see it from you know, the circle right here. The glow from Kilauea seen from the top of Mauna Loa. So look, it turned out to be quite a clear, clearer event from that perspective. Still waiting for the KW so, cam to reload here. The go ahead, Dane. So if the water is gone now, this is the question. So if the water is gone now, is it likely that the sulfur level in the immediate area will rise significantly? You would expect it potentially, but it's it's weird right now. Like um, we don't know where this monitor is exactly positioned either. Right, and, we, um, and, I, and I've mentioned before that the monitor really depends a lot in the wind direction, right? And we can, we can see from this Im live image of the Kaika streaming here in the middle of our broadcast, right? Um, but this that this plume is blowing all to the south and the west, right? So if that monitor happens to be over here, it may not pick anything up. And there's a lot of steam in here as well, right? So you know, certainly there's a lot of SO2, but that the signal, signal will become cleaner the more after the, after there's the, the steam boils off, so to speak, right? There's less steam, so. Um, yeah, I I think probably that will be you, you will it will be easier to see the the sulfur signal after this I believe right you know um we saw that after the eruption you know ended after the collapses ended in August 2018 it took until July 2019 for water to peak its way back up and through there and part of that delay we think had to do with the rocks being hot and the, and the water having to cool the rocks as it worked its way in there so no matter what we kind of reset that whole system that whole pattern and now it's really hot through there as a big you know hot pathway through there. Um, how wide that is now that's that's interesting to think about also you know a lot of these dikes are not not more than a few yards across um but the actual lava lake itself like that would be a place where you have a big pond of heat right you know that could have some some effect something like that right um yep so um it looks like janice just posted some photos i'll it's drop like you a link in your load. telegram uh, but yeah, she's posted some photos. So you should see the moon bow over tonight. <laughs> really impressive. You see it much more detailed on what's going down. Oh, sorry, guys. What's going on with this? Wrong button. All right, I still wish that this time lapse would refresh here. I'll just pull up Janice's for now. Okay. Okay, here we go. Photos from Janice Way, a National Park volunteer photographer. So. Let's see if we can get them one at a time in our full perspective here. Well, you got the comments apparently. <laughs> it just does not like uh, playing nice when we're live. So 
So yeah, we are just trying to pull up some pictures uh, that were recently taken there at the Kilauea summit of the eruption. Trying to get them to load. Trying to get everything to play nice with us when nothing wants to play nice with us. All right, well, look at them just like this. So look at that. Now you can see the big, the big uh, steam cloud, right? Um, it looks like possibly yeah, some that. ash, but you really can't see. Really can't see any ash in there necessarily. It might just be a big clean. Um, let's try that. Oh, let's see. That's gonna give me a second. Yep, we're trying to get the images to to load. The webcams need to refresh faster. For normal days, the refresh rate would be a you know fine that they're set at, but there does need to be like a something's happening button that makes it refresh much faster. Also, maybe you know secure a few more servers to uh, help uh, serve up the content. But hey, there's all kinds of you know fixes that you can make for the next time, right? Kaika said that the lake evaporated away within 30 minutes of the start of the eruption. Within 30 minutes, huh? So, yeah, we just couldn't see all that steam. And there you can see some ash coming up in these yeah, images. Well it's, well, it's hard to tell if it's ash ash to me or not, right? You know, you know, um, Could be just cumulus cloud. It's... it's it could be, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's, that there's a lot of steam mixed in there, right? And so right. billowing steam, you know, with the light kind of shadows, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced just based on that. Mm -hmm. So we still can't get those images, it looks like. I'm trying, but um, I have a lot of things going here, so it's kind of right. doesn't always work. Here we go. This is the image. Image by Janus Way, um, taken from Facebook, right here. So, lots of people up there. Kaika's saying around 500 people are up there watching. Wow. Yeah, look at that, you guys. The first high quality image of this eruption that I've seen. Yeah, it's a yeah, definitely. You can see the stars back in here as well. Yeah, so nice capture by Janus, yeah. So let's give her a like there. Oh, it looks like USGS <coughs> just put something out, I'll drop it in Telegram. Should pull it up. It's All right, so here we go. USGS Volcanoes Facebook page posting a map reconstructed, or a map right here. So um, let's see if I can maybe just get everything else to go away here. I, mean, I might have been asking too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's not loading with the image. It's just not going to happen. So, I'm going to do it like this. All right, so this is zooming in on a USGS image, and you can see that they have labeled three vents. This is where we put our A, right in here. And there's our B, and there's our C. Right in there, A, B, C, right? And they say the water lake, totally replaced with lava. That's what it says right in here. Okay, and totally so let's see what replaced. it says. Um, the water to base of my critters has been replaced with a growing lava lake. A growing lava lake. The uh, lava coverage is deeper by 10 meters, 32 feet, um, or larger and bigger in extent than the water in this photo. 
So it's already filled past where the lot, you know, it already has taken all the space that where the water was taking, and it's um, more than that, right? So we know from our calculations before I can probably pull them up, but um, yeah, no how much how much water was, uh, you know, how many how much water is in there? A huge amount, a big volume. That's already all like being filled. Meters deep before, right? Europe has been 15. going almost been going almost four hours right now. Um, it says here the easternmost easternmost vent is currently exhibited fountains easternmost vent vent being f vent A this one right here easternmost vent fountains approximately fifty meters one hundred sixty four feet high with minor fountaining on the west side so minor fountaining at these other vents right here occasional blasts of uncertain origin are occurring from the lava lake surface is also the first report we have of any kind of blasts or explosions something like that right um, so. Certainly, is something we've you know when you have water trapped in there, steam explosions like you know that that kind of thing can be happening no matter what uh, else is going on on a lava lake surface over there. So I really want this uh, time lapse to load, but maybe you can get, if you can get that loaded down and drop it, download it and drop it to me, that'd be awesome. All right. Um, in the meantime, oh, let's see, maybe it'll come this time. Oh, their their server is just getting killed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this has gone international by now. I mean, everyone is looking for any kind of news nowadays that has not not to do with the rest of, of what's happened in 2020. Yeah, I yeah. mean, all of it. So you know, here we are. This is a you know something that's not affecting people. It's not actually you know um, putting anyone at risk at this point in time. Um, so. That's her main message today. There is an eruption in Halle Magma happening, if you guys are joining us more recently. Um, but there is no threat to anybody right at this moment. Um, it's happening all within the park, all localized. It doesn't seem to be any kind of major explosions. We have uh, USGS reports of occasional blasts from the surface of the lake happening, but you know the lake is basically um, now a lava lake, right? So once you have a lava lake, you can start having circulation, and you might have trapped steam that could be bursting through the surface still, you know, pockets of steam still in there. Um, since we did have a lot of water, a lot of hot rocks, water soaked rocks, you know, water soaked ground all around there, all that steam all around as the heat kind of spreads around will kind of evaporate and gather. And if it's, if there's kind of trapped, it'll kind of burst its way out of there, right? Just kind of any kind of steam explosion is kind of normal. Um, that's the kind of smaller ones that we anticipated that are not of huge threat of course we're gonna you know watching for any signal anything kind of escalating but right now it's a very quiet gentle passive um event um very very interesting to see that you know kind of something that's come up already in our stream earlier today is how long might something like this actually last and we have no idea is a short answer but looking at eruptions after the collapse of the of the of the crater in 1924 there were eruptions that average more or less two weeks 10 days or two weeks sometimes as little as two days sometimes a whole month you know um kind of we're not sure where we fit into that whole range of things but likely it's something where it relieves its pressure or refills the the pit at the bottom of Hale Mau Mau. it kind of heals some of that cracking you know lava is going to fill all those cracks and kind of seal them back together from all the collapse that happened and i have to do that a lot of times several times it's kind of like a like a leaky I don't know, a leaky inflatable. You have to kind of patch and, you know, patch here, then patch there, then patch here, then patch there. It might have to kind of happen several phases in 1924, um, after the 24 collapse that happened seven times over 10 years, right? So that's kind of the pattern we've been expecting. Um, in 1924, we had an eruption that happened only a few months after the collapse. And so we speculated that might be a possibility. It's been two years for us here at Kilauea, And we can see that you know uh, the eruption finally finally is happening in a passive, gentle way, not a threat to people. Um, Dane, whatever you yeah, want to add. I was trying to download that that uh, time lapse, and the server is somewhere between lagging out and uh, as slow as I can ever imagine. Um, it, it, I keep getting estimates of it'll take 30 minutes to download a 16 megabyte file. It's like that. That's um, mm. 
but yeah, we're trying to get that KW cam time lapse up. It's just the server is not able to cope with the the traffic that it's seeing right now. Everybody trying to pull up images, hit and refresh, all that kind of stuff. Is that server's dying? It's like, why me? Why tonight? <laughs> We can see, see see here what might, what might be some of the harmonic tremor signal at the outlet seismograph, kind of showing a magma move, movement coming out of the ground. You don't see it a whole lot of places, right? Kind of very really localized. You do see it, Byron. You know, um, not yeah. That's really the, really where we see it. You don't really see it that many other places. And it could be that these signals are also kind of getting getting um, dated at this point because there is a little, there is a lag in the signals that we are getting here. Right. So. This is Kilauea here. Um, our tilt's not showing anything anything funny on Kilauea. Fairly standard right there. GPS is kind of kind of normal as well. We're gonna see that that this was the depth of water at Kilauea in the end, maxed out at about 50 meters, right? Something like 180 feet ish, something somewhere in that range. Um, right in there. And this will be the day, December 20th. Now we've not switched to December 21st here in Hawaii. But December 20th was the, you know, we heard within 30 minutes. So by 10 p.m. ish, the water pond in Hale Mau had evaporated due to the new lava pouring in from the three vents. And so let's recap what we do know right here. Look at this image once again. This is our best image we have so far in KW Cam from uh, USGS. No, it's not. Check your telegram. All right. So. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a pretty good image. It's not the best image, though. USGS just posted the best image. All right. So let me let me get that lined up here. Okay, so the time lapse, kind of garbage. Oh yeah. Um, you have, you know, how it rotates frames, like three frames a second or four frames a second. You have right. maybe one. You have maybe one frame of glow. One oh. frame, and it likes. Oh, I, you can. I I think I lost your audio a little bit there, Dan. So basically, there's not enough resolution. Yeah, um, we have to wait it's for the SGS to, re to release something else. Yeah, um, you know, I was going to mention, yeah. you know, they, they don't really have permanent permanent um, um, facility up at, at the national park anymore. But you know, this is something that were in early 2018 they actually put up a live YouTube YouTube stream, right? So maybe at some point people do something like that. We can hope. But right now we have this image that that uh, Dan shared with us. This is, this is from where, Dan? Tell us where this is from. USGS posted it on their Twitter. On our Twitter? They said, All right. uh, lava is cascading into the summit water lake, boiling off the water and forming a new lava lake. The northeast, the northern fissure pictured was producing the tallest lava fountain at roughly 50 meters, 165 feet, and all the lava was contained to the Holly Mau Mau crater in the Kilauea caldera. All right, so yeah, here's that fountain, the one we've been labeling event A. I'll, I'll keep calling it A, and we'll go back to our map. I probably can't see it right over the red. There, there's A right in there. This one here is B, and we can actually see here this whole fissure is C, right? Okay, C is actually a whole. I can zoom in maybe a little bit, a little more in this picture. It's kind of maybe reaching my max resolution, but we see a fissure right here. Right, this is a fissure line with like a little fountain, little fountain, a little spatter, a little spatter. Right, this is the kind of thing we saw before. The kind of Leilani. Here's another little fissure right through here, kind of right. in echelon, right? So, and then maybe in line, right? If you kind of we zoom out, these all kind of essentially connect as fissures stepping over like that, right? Our vent A is our main vent where the magma, is, where the crack is the widest, magma, the lava is coming out the easiest. Fountain's 50 meters high. Looks like it's kind of splashing all the way down through here. Kind of pouring into the lava lake right in here. You can see it's it's 
pushing an active flow over top of the surface of that crust in this direction. Now that's crusting over now as well. It looks like in here you see some bubbling, right? Like this looks like bubble is bursting through the crust of a lava lake, even kind of through here as well. This might be even the second little little mini fissure kind of bubbling through this other lava fountain, um, lava flow, right through here. It's kind of, this might be a cliff actually. It looks like it might be falling over and bubbling a little bit right through there. Um, not really sure what's going on there, but um, you see it's gotten, gotten quite dark in this area right through here, right? So that might be a thicker crust forming. If a thicker crust is forming, you might see why, the, why there might be some kind of explosions. Maybe that lava is getting more quenched because of the water in that, in that area and the steam. But that's going to basically form a little, little pad at the bottom. It's going to just keep filling and filling. You know, we'll, we'll have to see like how how much fuller this thing actually gets. This is going to be what, what the next phase actually is, right? We can kind of see... Um, it looks like there's like this, this is the block right in here, right? This is kind of that lower block. So interestingly, on that lower block, we have a fissure coming through it, right? And then also right. on that wall, on that eastern wall right over there. So it's uh, unlikely that this thing will get covered right in here. But we might see lava flow actually coming and filling this zone right through here. More like that might be my guess, right? And it could uh -huh. be that we see that these, these fissures may, may die off. Right. over the next 24 hours and the eruption might focus to the single vent and depending on how long this goes on it might form a small little cone in this area right if it actually can build on this steep hillside you might get some kind of half a cone on this bottom half it might kind of pile up and do something like that right so you might end up with right. a lava lake depending how long it goes on and a little bit of a hill and a river of lava that kind of feeds it feeds into it we'll have to see how that actually progresses but well, it depends how long it goes on, how much pressure is built up down there, right? We've been seeing earthquakes um, in, the, in the Caldera and Upper East Rift. The USGS printed them out first in June, June of this year. Right. So it's been six months. Um, and, you know, it, it took a while that building, building, building. We kind of, you know, been saying, I, I, I said less than a month ago, well, you know, these kind of pattern, usually in a couple of weeks to a couple of months, something happens, a small eruption, whether it's in the Upper East Rift or... We've always thought the summit was more likely, um, although the Upper yeah. East Rift has been has been of, of concern recently because it's also been quaking. So, but right. this is definitely definitely is the best picture. So thanks for sharing, Dane, uh, via USGS Twitter. Right, so, maybe just what's your thoughts on? Um, so we've all we've talked previously in our streams about uh, the eruption sequence starting at the summit before migrating to the rifts. Yeah, you think there is a chance still that we could see upper rift zone? East Rift Zone uh, activity at the end of this, or to as a you know a phase transfer. Um, it's it, I think it's unlikely in a short term. You know, um, that's that's kind of a, really a hard thing to gauge. Um, it certainly is more possible now than it was before, right? I mean, that's kind of right. the pattern pattern of volcano goes through. Is at some point it is going to switch more to to more of that that pattern. Um, and so it's just a matter of how long it takes for it to do that, right? So it could go right away at the end of this one. It could take several months break and then not, you know, and come back to the summit. And, you know, I still expect that the easiest, weakest place is in the rift zone. Because you know, otherwise you have to be able to pressurize a whole upper east rift enough to round the Ben Amana Ulu and put lava all the way back toward, you know, an upper east rift. And that is a harder thing to do dynamically because of the angle. There's, there's a curve in the rift zone there, right? That's kind of, that, that kind of pinches it closed. It's like a kink in the hose almost, right? You have to kind of, that's got to be really pressurized to like, to like open up the kink so to speak right right and that could happen but it's hard to do that if the cork is cracked on top of the thing and that's kind right. of what, what we're seeing right here is it's just going to come out the crack at the surface rather than you know until it actually fills a hole enough 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 and eventually you know this is going to be a flat floor caldera again and at that point you're going to have a situation like we right. had back in 2000 in the 2000s you know when lava was going underneath high mau mau Right, you know, we had an eruption in 1974 at Kanakakoi, and it took nine years, but lava worked at oil nine years later, right? So, you know, it, it, it could be years, you know, I don't think it's going to be weeks necessarily, you know, I, I expect it to be the summit more often, right? You know, more, more, more often and sooner, right? That doesn't eliminate the chance of a upper east rift eruption or of some progression, right? But we do know we lost a lot of magma. We know that we're refilling the magma for a while, but we know it can't have built to anywhere near the pressure we had before 2018. That's just, it wasn't possible. There's not the space in there. The chamber is not the same size. There's way more cracks that can't pressurize as much. 
with less right. pressure now than we had, right? The, the, the intrusion that was talked about December 2nd, USGS talked about how that was smaller than when it happened in 2015, when Halimau was overflowing. That was kind of a, a good example of the, of the peak pressure during lava lake and pool activity combined, right? Dana, yep. I'm going to pass it to you here um, and take a phone call. All right. So uh, it looks like our stream has been shared by Anthony Quintano. Okay, um, you will remember him from the 2018 eruption. Yes, he so was I, yeah. doing the come up there? Civil Beat live stream, right? And we're 24-7 streaming huh? from uh, Holly Kamaina area of the 2018 oh, eruption. Awesome. It's not, no, no hurry, huh? And it was really a, um, you know, it was a great stream that he had set up. But now we're we're looking yeah, for that kind of uh, pay, pay tribute, you know, to uh, happen yeah. at the Kilauea Caldera, right? We we yeah, we, we, maybe, so, maybe, maybe, yeah. I guess it's gonna be like that all night, no matter what. From just the Sunrise cameras that the we had, time, yeah, to know, yeah. But it's quite obvious at this point that it's, you can miss. Stuff. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I mean, I, I might be able, I might be up streaming all night for all we know at this point. Yeah, there's, you know, a, there's a USGS, uh, I don't know if you saw it, we, we just put it up on a, on a stream, there's a USGS Twitter photo, you can see the fountain, there's a fountain there saying uh, 50 meters, 160 feet, on the east side, in line. then that, a small uh, province on, a, on, a, on the north side. Share them with us. Is a picture? Making a new lava lake? Yep. So, uh, you you want to said it was gotten in 30 minutes, yeah, the water. Stream, some guys that we work with, 2018. Right on. And now back on it again. Um, okay, this, this eruption is taking place. Inside the era of Kilauea. Yeah, you still got good there. service. You, you, want, you want to join in on ours? If you want, I can uh, or catch anything. you in. People okay. or property. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll drop you the link on Google Meets, and then I'll get you set up. For this type of activity to take place, you know. Okay, shoots. Whenever there's an eruption, there's always concern, know, like, okay. oh, is it coming for me? And no, it's not It's not coming for you, not this one. Um, but we are watching some potential ash get deposited up high. And... We're watching a big amount of glow from the uh, inside this new lava lake. So we went from lava lake to water lake back to lava lake in what two and a half years? No, three years. We can find it in. So three years went from lava lake to water lake back to lava lake. So it's you know incredible how fast that in geologic time. You know normally you're talking geologic time on a volcano. You're talking about much longer than your lifespan. Right, but we're just in the past couple of years seeing some crazy stuff, you know, and that's just how you know Hawaii operates. It's a different speed. So, did Kai have anything to share? Uh, just a second. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, we're gonna gonna try to patch him in here. Oh, we're but gonna bring Kai in. But give me a second to set it up here. All right. So. Uh, so right. Just kind of going through, like I'm, I'm literally checking Twitter, making sure that uh, I'm not missing something new. Newsweek's already, you know, the main, the, the media from about out and about are already posting photos. Apparently, the UK Express has already purchased one of the better photos that I've seen of this, so I'll grab that. Maybe they want to layer on fifty kinds of ads. Um, when Phil has, you know, catches back up, we'll pull that one up. But yeah, we have all kinds of activity going on. It's not that concerning, but it is, you know, an eruption. It's the eruption that we've been looking as a potential to happen. And now it's happening. We're watching USGS. We're watching Civil Defense. We're watching the Kaika Marzo, Ken Boyer, and many other other guys that are up there. I remember from 2018, covering it again. And it's, you know, it's again funny to me watching or when I read the mainstream or, you know, like media from the UK or something like that talk about Kilauea, like during this in 2018, because the context is lacking. That's all I'll say about it. The context is really lacking about it, but you know, it's it's a good way to get people to visit your site when there's an eruption. 
Sorry, just talking some trash. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Sorry if I was talking over Dan there a little bit. I was, uh, I don't know, I thought I had pushed the mute button, but I obviously did not. So, um, yeah, we got this another image here that Dane passed to us over here. Got it up on the screen. Can you see it, Dane? Yeah. Yep. What, what do we got going on here? I don't know. I'm just trying to catch up on chat. I don't know. You get a, you got a, you got the edge of the caldera there and the glow coming down from within. You can see the plume coming out of there much more now. You might We're see possibly to... the top of the fountain might be right in here, possibly. Could be. It's hard to, hard to really say. Because that's a deep pit. Yeah, it's coming off of the edge, right? It's not coming from the very bottom of the pit. Right. And, you know, one thing that we, that we expect to happen as eruptions progress is the fountains can get taller and taller and taller as a, as a, as a focus is to one vent. If you remember, right. Kilauea Kilo Iki went through a pattern of, you know, a crack on a wall of the, of the crater that lasted less than 12 hours, something like that, less than 24 hours, focused to one vent, and then that fountain grew from being, you know, 50 meters to eventually being 580 meters. Not saying that's going to happen here. We don't see that kind of same pattern of seismicity that followed before Kilauea Iki. Not the same amount of magma coming up, so it's not going to be like like that. But it could it could grow a little bit bigger than that, right? This is something something we didn't exactly see at Fisher Eight because the the amount of lava that came through, wedging the rift zone open, causing a six point nine, essentially made a pathway that was big enough. The nozzle was open too big. It's almost like the sprayer in your garden hose, right? Like the smaller the the actual gap, the farther it can shoot and spray out. And so the gap it was basically open too much. At Fisher Eight, and it was kind of just gushing out super fast obviously but it wasn't spring any air quite as high right so that's kind of the difference of what might happen here is you know eruptions often the fissures the lava is going to basically go lowest possible place uh, downhill into the crater obviously here but at some point we actually come up to that level of that crack and start patching it back in and then it's going to start sealing itself back up and then that's the question of when something funny might actually happen right so yeah we're just trying to find you know the latest photos that are coming out trying to Keep up with uh, this emerging eruption. And I'm still trying to download that stupid GIF off of... I know people have tried to send it to me on private message on Messenger, but yeah, that didn't work either, download. And I'm just trying to get theirs to load. It's not happening. That server's dead. We'll keep trying, guys. So if you're just joining yeah. us, I'm Philip Ong. I'm here with Dane DuPont. We are here covering the uh, newest eruption of Kilauea, the first one in 2020. Um, we have a lot of USGS data. We have live streams from different people who, are, who have been on, on scene. Um, let me, I'll just try to see reload here and see if this, this uh, image comes up any differently here, although we, as we're seeing, there's a lot of traffic in the USGS site, so the, the imagery is coming up pretty slow here. And of course, I'm doing a lot of streaming. The streaming is also intensive, and you know, I'm sure that our whole island is abuzz with activity tonight. Yeah, it almost one o'clock. I sent uh, another photo to you, USGS. All right, I'll save and line that one up as well. Okay, there's our latest USGS photo. Right, and they say um, the caption for it is a steaming gas plume from the eruption in Holly Mau Mau Crater at Kilauea Summit. Lava contained within the crater illuminates the steam produced by the lava interacting with and boiling off the summit water lake that resided in the base of Holly Mau Mau Crater. Right, so they're just, they have somebody up there that's basically taking photos and just shipping it back to the USGS communications team. They're like, just get it out, you know. Yes, Post thank it. you. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is great. We appreciate that. And it even looks like, you know, in that previous image that uh, that we showed from looking down in the caldera, I would even wonder if one of the USGS guys didn't walk around Chain of Craters to take that photo. Get in a position that, you know, normal people yeah. would have access. Well, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, yeah, it's just a guess, this is the place that Matt Patrick often goes to take measurements of the depth of the summit water right next to the KW cam. And he that often does it. that with a gigantic telephoto lens, right? That he's often used to release videos of time lapses of the lava lake, or I'm sorry, of the water lake. Now I'm gonna have to get more, more careful with my terminology, right? Because we've now yeah, tonight, I... tonight we now no longer have a water lake; we have a lava lake. So the water lake, uh, he was measuring a water lake depth from this angle with a telephoto lens, and now he's shooting at the lava lake with a telephoto lens. And um, maybe you could pull up a, I can pull up one of these lava, lava water lake time lapses to show you guys the angle but it's basically what we're looking at there so it could be any, any one of those you know us geologists you know uh matt patrick carolyn parchetta you know there's all kinds of other guys that are also you know um i'm sure that they're now obviously an overnight watch they're gonna be pulling 24-hour shifts for however long this lasts you know it could be a couple weeks um so they are in full mode it could be any number of people up there and we all definitely appreciate them releasing some information to us so we can stream it to you guys here and let you guys know what's going on here live from kilauea we have uh ulani from volcano saying that uh she has a sore th or they have a sore throat and all the windows are closed okay so yeah so, there is some gas effect some so2 classic so2 type stuff um, um, I remember fourth row was always the one that I kind of kept my eye on during in 2018 was that uh, frog in the throat feeling. Right. Considering that like, a lot of the monitors, the gas monitors were too slow in terms of right. giving you read out, you just feel it first. And then you're like, all right, we're out of here. And then the monitor would go off as you're leaving. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> we're already leaving. Do, 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 did she say where in Volcano she is, by chance? Okay, so let me see. Um, uh, we okay. Sorry, guys. What's up? How are you doing? Okay. All right, so hold on. Doing? Oh, we got to click on audio. Gonna... Let me try to get your video on here. And I need to unpending. Where's where are you? Okay. Sorry guys. Let me figure out my on the fly broadcasting here. All right. Oh, there we go. One. That works. All right. No, wait. Did that, just go to Akaikas. Yeah, I'm trying. There you go. All right. Okay, Kaika. How's it going, guys? How you guys doing? All right. Good, good. How are you? All right. Good. We're right here. Um, right at the edge. Uh, right outside KMC. So it's a beautiful night. There's a lot of stars out. Um, and it's there's an eruption. We have an eruption. There's an eruption. <laughs> again. We've heard those words before. That's Thankfully. <laughs> but um, you know, it's nice. There's hundreds of people up here. Um, the park rangers are out making sure everyone's safe. There's some USGS guys at the edge of um, at the edge of the caldera monitoring the spatters that is happening on the caldera floor. Um, but in the last like 20, 30 minutes, we've been seeing some little plumes coming up here and then um, that shows indication of um, there is a lot of activity happening on the crater floor. All right, USGS was saying on their uh, or on their Twitter feed that there, or in the statement they put out, that there were some explosions going on down there yes. at the crater floor. Yep. Um, now and then you feel a little tremor here and then, uh, right here at the crater. Uh, but nothing too major. 
to be what? honest, to be honest, it's just it looks like a normal Halima Umau day. Um, you know, previous to the 2018 eruption, right? Uh, tons of people up here uh, exercising social distancing with some masks here and there, but again, it's just the the glow is there. Um, you know, it looks pretty much the same as what's pre uh, 2018, but um, you know, what is the uh, SO2 like? Um, right now, earlier when it was a little more clear, uh, there was a lot of SO2 coming out and it was headed down into the Kau district area. Um, so we wanted to, um, get the team together and kind of brainstorm and make sure that our adjacent communities, Volcano, um, Kau, uh, Pahala, Punalu, Naleo, Waiohino, and Ocean View, uh, be safe from this SO2 that is going in that direction. But, mm-hmm. you know, the levels look pretty normal uh, from pre-eruption of 2018, before 2018, but nothing major right now. Right. So, uh, still saying earthquakes up there, huh? Still feeling yep. them? Yeah, the some small ones here and there. Yeah, it's a... Uh... You see some of the footage or some of the photos that have been coming out, like Janice Way put some out, and USGS put some high definitions ones out that they took on the caldera looking down. No, I haven't seen it yet. They're so they're talking about there being three different fissure lines in there. That really? uh, yeah, three different ones. Then as you were saying, they talked about it too that the the water lake went away really quick, mm-hmm. right? That lot of that water lake evaporated really quick, and now they're saying that the uh, the level of the water lake, right? That level that it was at. The, the lava lake is now 10 meters higher than that. So it's already filled it all in. 45 yeah. meters. Because it was 45 meters before. 50. Right yeah. the, the water lake. And yeah. now it's about 10. So it's about, you know, 55 60. meters. 60 yeah. meters. Yeah, 60 there. meters. Already filled all that in, huh? Do you, yeah. do you guys have the uh, information on how much lava that is coming in within into the caldera right now? Not without doing some back of the envelope calculations that we'd have to, you know, right. go on the fly. Um, yeah, we, I could probably job. could do that. It's hard to do that live, though. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do that calculation live, you know, because the pressure's on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's so. What's your thoughts up there? What's the what's the atmosphere like with all the people? There's there's a lot of buzz up here. There's tons of people. Um, the rangers are up here making sure everything is safe. Um, I would say there's probably maybe close to three to four, five hundred people Ooh, up yeah. here. Uh, you know, there's a buzz. You know, especially from the 2018 eruption to now, you know, people. Want, there's right. a lot of people are are on edge because of the 2018 eruption, especially people within Puna. Um, I see a lot of Puna people up here. Um, but, you know, the buzz is up, there's an eruption, there's a glow within the crater, and people want to, people want to know what's going to happen in the next 24 to 48 hours. Right. That's going to there- be the question, especially when somebody gets up in the morning to do an overflight of the thing. Let us know a little more, a little bit better uh, detail when the light comes out. Yep. And I'll, I will know more in the next 24 hours with, with some of our crew on, on the ground and also in the air to find out what's really going on. And, you know, I guess like Mahalo you, Philip and Dane, you guys been on it three weeks ago on uh, on the information and updates on the, the this eruption. You guys called it. You guys called it. You know, I just want to say this. So uh, four days ago, you guys um, kind of pushed HVO to up, up, up the level on the eruption. On right. It to orange, right? Yellow, we were talking yellow. about. It. Yellow, yellow. Yep. So, you guys knew it was going to happen, so hey, congratulations and thank you guys so much for keeping our community updated. Oh, you're welcome, and thank you for everything you do. I mean, you're the kind of the ringleader of this whole this whole circus in some ways, you know. Right, man. <laughs> not yeah, really, for not sure. Really. But, <laughs> guys, and we'll meet up tomorrow morning and do an assessment again and, uh, right. and address our community as much as possible and see how we can help our community as much as possible within the adjacent areas, especially Kau. How long are you yeah. going to be staying up there? Right. I'll probably be up here until um, another hour. Then we'll mm-hmm. head home and, and regroup. 
I know Ken will be up here in the next hour or so, so he'll take over uh, uh, my feed up here, and then I'll go home and take a rest and then come back up. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. it was interesting to me today because we were at the Makuu Farmers Market, right? Right. And somebody I haven't seen in about a year and a half, and that was you know essential for us running around in the 2018 eruption. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Hara, the guy Andrew was Hara. Uh, a savage during the eruption. And now, you know, I'm sure he's going to be back up there soon. Yep. Hey, man, it's Chainsaw. He'll be up here helping out. <laughs> but, you know, again, thank you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. And we'll All right, figure yep, out yeah. our opportunities. Before you, before you go, Ikaika, before you go, one last yep. question. What, what, what's the mood like up there? Is anyone worried about explosions or anything like that? Not really. It's real quiet here. Um, you know, there's no the mood is not that way because it's so peaceful and very beautiful up here um and we feel safe so especially with the national park service up here uh, working with everyone and making sure everything there is safe up here it's it's a good mood it's a good mood great great nice. yeah that, that's our, that's our message today is this is a safe eruption there's no 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 cause for alarm here right you know we will keep an eye on any possible explosions in ash and pass out. You guys are going to uh, organize tomorrow some mask giveaways, yep. yeah? And, and like like I said, you know, the mood is pretty much almost the same as in 2017 a view of Halimamo Crater up here at Jagged Museum. You know, very safe, very calm. Um, and you can see the glow from a distance and enjoy, enjoy it with your family. Um, but also... Tell there's there's a buzz in the air. People want to see it, and and um, there's a lot of people on the road here. So, if you guys want tomorrow, be a beautiful time to come up and bring your family up on the hostess, it's the hostess day of um, yeah. So, come up. As of right now, Samantha uh, Hansen says that flights are not restricted over the summit, and that she's a helicopter pilot in Hilo. Um, so yeah, gotta get them choppers and uh, Cessnas up. <laughs> and if you have an extra seat uh, and you're doing that, or like three or four extra seats, you know, just let us know. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> but you know, after the 2018 eruption, my butt size got a lot bigger. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'll probably get up here on on maybe later on tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, got some texts that they want to go fly up. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, man. All right, Thanks Kaka. for calling Mahalo. in. Take care. Aloha. Aloha. Stay classy, Puna. Stay All right. classy. Mahalo, Kaika. <laughs> Aloha. So, yeah, that was a Kaika Marzo live from the uh, summit of Kilauea on the rim of the caldera. And uh, Samantha has a follow-up. She says that the... Uh, she's looking for a TFR to go up that could limit flights. The red aviation code that HEO posted is just a warning for pilots of potentially hazardous conditions. Great. Thank you so much, Samantha, for, for that reporting and uh, sharing information with us here. It's so, going to be uh, important. Come tomorrow. Yeah. Samantha, uh, I have a question. Could you drop in the chat the link to where you're looking for the TFR? Yeah, mahalo, you guys. Thank you. In the meantime, we have here a USGS posted video on Facebook. Short video here, Roland. Um, of, it's only 11 seconds long. I'm re re repeating it over and over of that fountain. The fountain's down there. And that action down there. Maybe I can get it downloaded and loop it for you guys here. Maybe you can get Dana's help with that here. Um, what, what am I doing? Sorry. I was reading. Yeah, this... Uh, um, Video that US just just posted. Let me drop it to you. Oops, sorry guys. No. So yeah, here's the video. Let's see if I can zoom in well enough for you guys.
And what did you want? Do you want me to grab the video off of Facebook? Yeah, if you can, yeah, so I can just play it on the loop. All right, let me see if they have it somewhere else first. Yeah, that'd be great. Eh, forget it. I'll take it off of Facebook. So yeah, there's our video. You can see that fountain back in here. This is our fountain A. There's our B. C's back in here. Lava pouring into the bottom. We'll keep replaying it. The pond used to be right down in here. Pond of water. Now it's a lava lake. It's forming a crust. Right? The lava's flowing over the top. The fountain is still going when this video was taken. This is 11.30 p.m. timestamp according to the USGS caption here. So this was uh, about an hour and a half ago. Right? Um, the fountain you can see is not... not Here's the upper rim of the caldera, so we really probably cannot see the top of the fountain from another angle. But you can see quite a lot of steam right here, and that steam's going to be very, very bright from the fountain that's kind of illuminating it down here while pouring lava down a slope into this lower pit right through here. And you got the video now. All right, thank you. Yeah, and it's, some of you might question why I'm having a cigarette. Um, hey, it's been a long night. I was at the bar before this happened. <laughs> we were not expecting this. I was at Kaleo's, just like, oh, it's just a normal Sunday. And then uh, all of a sudden it wasn't. Well, it kind of, you know, turned back into, as Akaika was saying, the previous, the old normal, where there's a glow in the, coming from the crater of Holly Mamo and not much else going on. And we lived with that for years. Where that Ten was years case. in the end. Ten years in the end, yeah. it was. Mostly uninterrupted, but, you know, by other activity. But there was other activity. But, yeah, that lava lake just kind of did its thing. Now we're, it's like going back in time in some ways, right? Like, everything was the new normal there. And then we went back to the old normal in the matter of just a few hours. I'm gonna check on chat. Samantha posted the link so I can check it in the morning. Thank you very much. So I assume you just just search for Hawaii, and then if there if it shows up, you know it's up in the morning. And if it doesn't, then you can fly over the thing. Hopefully, it, there is no uh, TFR placed on this, and uh, you know pilots can be a pilot and not fly directly into the plume. You know and be reasonable and you know safe practices and you know they 2018 it was uh, in some ways a circus with all the flights you know the the airplanes and the helicopters that you know it was a dance for all the pilots but they were still able to manage it without you know an incident so i trust them to be able to you know fly over the the new lava lake respect uh, in a respectful way since they've you know been doing it now for two years for you know, for the way we're why we're talking about this is there previously was a long-standing pro. Uh, it was law. It was prohibited for flying over under uh, in an altitude that would be considered you know good for taking pictures above Kilauea for decade. And I'm not sure how long that one went back, but it went back a ways. Then after 2018, the uh, extension on that wasn't filed, and it kind of just went away. Right, it kind of just went away, and then people could fly over the summit again. So that that we're kind of just hoping that they don't TFR it by the morning, so that we can get some good photos out of there. Because if you people would remember 2018, often you'd get one, maybe maybe two overflights officially a day from government sources such as USGS, National Guard, Civil Defense. But when we started working with private pilots uh, like Scott Wilson, he was flying four to five times a day just himself, right? And he would all he was doing was taking his cell phone 
over his shoulder and just clicking, you know, take a picture and then sending us that. And that was hugely important, right? Because he caught things that nobody would have saw if it wasn't for him sharing the photos, right? And that's what we want to encourage other pilots to do. It's like, hey, if you do go up there, just, you know, send us a, you know, a quick cell phone pic. It doesn't got to be high resolution, you know, taken out of the perfect lens with the perfect focus. No, just get us something. We'll figure it out. Watching from Ocean View, watching from Pahala. Mm, that didn't work. Scott Wilson caught the birth of Fisher 8. Yeah, he caught a lot of stuff. He caught a lot of stuff. And it was all important, too. I mean, I remember, you know, officially people wouldn't be able to use the footage that we would provide, but you know that they were watching because it was just a steady, a steady dream of uh, footage coming in, you know, that we were posting on Hawaii Tracker on the Facebook group for anybody that's not aware of it. That's where most of our work gets done. You search up Hawaii Tracker on Facebook. Go ahead and uh, send a request. I'm probably going to have to thin out a few hundred by morning would be my guess. Because when these eruptions happen, you know, people want info and they want info. That's not, you know, some guy in the UK that decided to do a story on it or something along those lines, right? They want real info, real insight on the thing. Right. That's what we're trying to do. Trying to give, you know, a different perspective. Yeah, we got the USGS video here now in a loop. Now I maybe can, can draw on it a little bit and show you guys what's going on here, right? So right over here, our fountain A. I don't know if you guys can see, oh, that's not gonna show on that screen. But well, you can see right in, right in that center, our fountain going up. Um, lava streams. And again, I have to re redo this. I can draw on it again here. So it's just a... Uh... Jeremiah Oshuna's in the chat. Lava's back. Yes, sir. How is it, Jeremiah? Yep. It's going to be a little bit harder getting the drone over this one, though. Right, we're just gonna continue, you know, streaming until any, everybody goes to bed. Basically, we're still keeping an eye on for anything new. So, you guys, maybe we can start from the top again. Can I just refresh to make sure we're, everyone's caught up? If anyone's joining a little late here, yeah, we're we're streaming live here from Kilauea, Hawaii, um, where there's been a new eruption um, began last night here, local time, nine thirty p.m. Um, within Hale Mau Mau crater, we now know that there uh, are th are essentially three small fissure lines. You know, um, three vent areas. Uh, the largest of which is on the east wall above the former water lake of Hale Mau Mau. Um, that that largest uh, of uh, fissure combined with the two uh, two other other ones on the northern edge of the collapse pit um, are feeding lava into the bottom of that pit. Within 30 minutes, by 10 p.m. last night, boiled away all of the water in a pond. Um, now we have a lava lake that's kind of filling um, from being fed by the fountains, filling that low spot. And that's what we have right now. We have uh, statements from the USGS. We've been showing you guys USGS videos, uh, USGS images, as well as live streams from people on the scene, um, including Keke Marzo, who just called in and, and gave us a nice report from the ground. Uh, yeah. sharing a mood um as far as concern we, we don't have any public concern or people are watching us in the park right now there's hundreds of people watching this event right now um this event um has not been very explosive but there have been uh, reports of some sounds of some booms but that could be something to do with the just the you know the transition of of water lake to lava lake and the steam blast that might accompany that you know um there haven't been any kind of massive explosions that we have heard of so far um there have been some small explosions that's expected um no concern of the eruption migrating anywhere else at this point in time it looks like everything is just stable stable at that one location right um we can check you signals go ahead one of the things that, um the explosions just comes to mind don't know how relevant it is 
But in the 1880-1881 eruption that you know went to into Hilo from Mauna Loa, mm-hmm. there uh, that lava flow got into a riverbed, right? And that mm-hmm. was kind of how it was funneling down towards town. And mm-hmm. the thing about that uh, is that the people in Hilo were reporting explosions taking place all throughout the night for weeks, right? As mm-hmm. water trapped in these areas would interact over time with the magma and go, you know, boom, and they'd hear it, right? It'd shake the ground just a little bit, but, right, it was the water between, the, the interaction between water and lava, you know, it, it's not a, it's not smooth. So there being some pops, some booms, as long as it doesn't put a, you know, a 30,000 foot ash cloud up, kind of expected. And it's, that's fine, right? It's really a, a big pop that uh, is concerning if that's even a potential anymore. But with that water lake completely gone at this point, it seems like most of that hazard potential is behind us. Yeah, we finally we, were, we are finally able to take the explosive eruptions officially off the table. <laughs> We've been talking about how we had to keep them on for a long time. And now with the, lo- with the water lake gone, it seems less likely. I guess you could still get it, but less likely now, the potential. Well, because now, now there exists a pass, a path that exists up through the water table that doesn't intersect it anymore because you've, you've kind of had a chance to clear it clear away, right? So the idea right. being that, you know, um, what it really depends on any, more than anything else we've discussed in the past is the rate of magma coming up, right? So this one was a, was not fast enough to cause that kind of explosion, you know, it was, it was slow enough to kind of burn its way through the water, steam it all away and kind of establish a path. It doesn't mean that there couldn't be a big rise of magma in the future. It comes up somewhere else other than here. If it comes up here, though, we can avoid that that scenario. But it's a volcano. At some point, it's likely to happen again. We just don't know exactly how. But our, you know, the concern people had just because they physically saw the lake, right? You know, through this, all these images and webcams, we didn't see the groundwater before. But really, the same thing has happened as this happens every eruption. And water, water has been burned through by the lava, just like what happened under Leilani, just like what happened under Kapoho in 1960. Same same pattern, and you know, all the time. Kiloiki, you know, it's, it's true. The water is deeper under the summit than it is in other places, and you know, it's rarer to see it because it's going to collapse so far down if we just see the water table, right? But um, yeah. other parts of the island um, are also all waterlogged, right? This island's like a sponge, and so every eruption comes up through water. You got something? Dan? I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm sending you another video that USGS just dropped. Thank you, Anthony Quintano, for sharing this one. Gonna be coming through in a minute. We'll get it up. It's really good definition on this one. All right. Really good. You can see that fountain just throwing. You can see all the two fountains, three, three fountains. All right. We'll Potentially four here. fountains. Four fountains. Let's call it now. Four fountains. looks like you have one on the nearest edge. Wait for him to get it up. But yeah, it looks like there are four fountains to me. Let's see if there's any more update. There was I can 11- check that if you want. Oh. Eleven thirty. I'm just waiting for the thing to open. Okay, there. Finally, it opened. Okay, let's bring that across. We got the right thing. Yeah. Okay. okay sorry, guys. A little extra clicking here. Let's see if we can get this thing to loop. This. All right, so here it is. Yep, you can see I'm counting four, four fountain areas. Looks like one of the fountains is above the other, and the lava is uh, channeling down into the other fountain. 
Yeah, this is what I was on describing under. earlier, right? Yeah, there's a fissure on a, on a lower part, a fissure in an upper part, a small fissure over here, right? This would be our C, yep. this would be our B, this over here is our A, probably more just like right in here, right? You yep. can kind of see some splashing That's of lava coming down here, but most of it, there's a giant torrent of lava. You guys can see now the flux. People were asking how much lava is coming out. That's a that's a lot of lava coming out of there, right? I think it's gushing, 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 gushing. Um, at the at the report time, the last report time. Let's see what we can what we see here as far as any depth in 11:30 p.m. 11:30 um, p.m. was an earthquake report, 4.4. And I cannot get to the last one before that, so not the easiest to access. But let's go back to our video here. So yeah, you can kind of see. A lava lake forming right through here. Here's the edge of the lava lake. All right. We, I believe there's like a ledge right here. Right there's an old block right here, and so there's like a lava falls happening here as well. Rapids going down. A second fissure. The rapids crosses the second fissure, joins it. There's another giant amount of lava pouring in this western end right right in here and you can kind of if you look closely there's some bubbling happening little bubble bursts as lava is causing causing the lake to kind of convect and overturn right through there you also see a similar thing right in here it's other kind of bigger channel but overall you see kind of a big crust forming right and the lava is kind of looks like it's going underneath the crust it's probably lifting this crust yeah so at some point right. we won't, won't be surprised if we see cracking Somewhere in this crust, and we see flows coming in from the middle of this thing, and like little tumulus burst, bursting out, and then being covered again and again. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, this is not a live video, this is like a looping video we have from the USGS. Right, Dane? USGS Twitter? So, one of the things I'm kind of thinking about is that in the, the volcano watch that USGS put out about the December 2nd incident in influx of magma into the system, right, where it injected. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were saying that it, most of this happened of the course of about four hours, that uh, episode of that injection, the earthquakes mm -hmm. and all of that. And they were estimating that it uh, was putting out the uh, volume of, in that four hours, the, that injection, it was uh, one to two hours worth of Fisher 8's volume, right? So roughly half, of, very roughly half of the uh the flux of fisher eight that one injection now this is a different injection it can be different obviously but if we just go with that you know and just as a very rough ballpark yeah that's a that's still a big amount of lava coming in there it's not fisher eight levels maybe at its highest levels but it's you can talk about them in the same capacity would be my guess on this in terms of how much lava is coming out, how quickly, and you can see that by how quickly that area filled in with magma. And we saw this with Green Lake too. I mean, Green Lake filled up real quick, right? When that was taken in 2018. Yeah. Well, I don't have a time on of this first issue um, by, by USGS, but they say that, that that thing had raised 10 meters above the level of the water, right? Yeah. yeah. And so the water was 50 meters deep. 10 meters is 60 meters. That's 200 feet. So it's, you know, it filled 200 feet in already by that first report. And I'm not right. Like, so it's not clear what time that actually was released. And to figure it out, we'd have to just take the, the LIDAR of the area and the volume calculations and figure out how much of that volume was filled in, how quickly over, you know, over time. And then you could tell, okay, what is the flux? But we haven't done those calculations and probably not going to do them tonight. It's one in the morning. Uh, those type of calculations aren't meant for this hour. Someone's um. doing them, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to do that and stream at the same time. So we're going to act as like the information relayers, right? And trying to kind of, you know, have everyone else um, feed us information. If you guys, you know, if you guys, anyone else wants to do calculations out there and pass it to us, that'd be awesome. Yep. Um, so, I kind of just but, I kind of gave them down there how I would do it at least. <laughs> Got to figure out just how big the crater is and then go from there. You know the timeline. You know roughly how deep it is. Yeah. 
I'll pass yeah, this off to the gardener and let her take it. She can handle. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I was, I was ch ch checking HBO news here. There, you know, there, there was basically one release about the eruption that was shortly after nine thirty, and then there's another release about the four point four earthquake. There's then no new other news since then. We're keeping an eye on those guys to actually be the you know our, our primary news source, but um, we of course they're busy monitoring eruption, figuring out what's actually right. going on over there, and hopefully trying to get their web servers a little bit um, more bandwidth. Yeah, I've been hopefully getting a camera up there that uh, can just 24-7 stream it. Because one of the things we realized in 2018 is well, there is 100% the bandwidth up there to be able to live stream. 100%. That is not an excuse. You could go live with a very remedial setup and it would work. So no yeah. pressure. No pressure. But I want to live stream. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how their system's set up as far as where their servers actually are and who feeds who and how often. That's a whole other oh, yeah, thing we're not, we won't get into. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's here. all network. So you see them, this more recent image here from the KW cam here. Let's see if we can get learn anything else from this more recent image here off the webcam, right? You can kind of see in this image right here, it looks like there's almost a couple little flows up above here, above this little ledge. Like there might have been a second little crack farther up that put out a couple flows that are now cooling, but it's not active anymore. All right, you see that, Dane? I'm gonna have to pull this one up. Sorry. It's kind of yeah. I can't resume my in anymore from from what I have here. I but just need like... the uh, the the thing to actually load. That's the hard yeah. part. We can see certainly the fishers that what I've been calling C, B, and A are all still active, right? All through here, yeah. so there's actually a whole bunch of extra glow over here. So I'm not sure what's happening in this area, right? It's almost like there's one zone of glow here and another one over here. In this very steam clouded image, so it's not clear what's happening there. If there's two vents or one vent with a lot of steam being lit up from below, that might be the more likely situation. With the, with that fountain is yeah. almost 200 feet high, and um, we can see that there's yeah, that's like, churning along the edge up. here. Yeah. So I mean, the question is going to be like, how much this thing actually fills up? It could be filling up all the way. You know, it might fill up as, as far as to if it actually can reach the height of these some of these fissures and block some of them off that'd be something right we know there's this big block down here that would be quite a thing if it could fill up all the way to that this would be the first thing to lap on at first right keep an eye on this margin right through here right and of course it's hard because there's a big crust forming in the middle that so far seems to be being lifted as lava injects below from either side the middle is right rising up right and it hasn't cracked at all, but you would expect it based on other lava lakes that we see. If we're at some point this crust to crack and turn over all this, all this stuff to sink back in because it's heavy, replaced by the fresh stuff coming from below, right? Cracks like we saw in a lava lake bubbling up. So, um, if the crust kind of right. stays solid, you might you might might see bigger bursts of gas that actually like burst through and crack it open. And that could be some of the source of that loud explosion sounds um, without any steam being involved at all, right? Who knows the dynamics mm -hmm. or how thick that crest actually is? That's a really, real tricky thing to see right there. Right. Going through some of the other cameras, seeing if there's anything on them whenever they load. Yeah, let's see if I <clears throat> what I can get here. <coughs> I'll show you guys this map here. Can I come? You guys joining later? Haven't seen this yet. All right, so this is a map USGS released last week on Thursday, in fact, as a follow-up to the December 2nd intrusion, kind of uh, kind of the first phase of this eruption, so to speak, the failed aspect of it, right? It actually opened a crack coming towards the surface, didn't make it to the surface until two weeks later when it actually had a renewed push. The crack was already there. It seems to have wedged the crack open some more and made it to the surface. So on this map, our vent A is somewhere right in here. Our vent B is somewhere right in here, and C right in here. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Maybe you can see this lighter gray patch right in here. Yeah. Is that low? Is that lower block? Yep. That one that you can see down there. Well, you could see it. Probably gone. <laughs> right in there. Yeah. To... So now the lava is coming uh, out from here here and here and it's filling in a spot right down here go ahead dane <clears throat> yep so derek uh asked so what happened to the green lake well 
the Green Lake was gone in 2018. If you meant the Green Lake or the brownish lake up at Holy Mau Mau, yeah, it's gone. It, it, it's also gone. Um, Lava Dunk claimed both of them. And now you just get the, uh, we get to watch the return of the lava lake to Holly Mau Mau. Or at least the filling in of the collapse pit. All right. So, can you just watch new stuff coming out? Good to see that uh, USGS isn't sleeping either. <clears throat> As expected, yeah. Yeah. Yep, we're just continuing to see if there's anything new coming out. I'm checking the different social media networks, seeing what I can find, seeing what's new, making sure we're not missing anything. Of yeah, course, the, the some of the first things I'm seeing are reused images from 2018, like that's real right now, which is going to be always an issue when you're dealing with social media is people do not understand in a lot of ways like when you know they're like oh there's an eruption and they google eruption and the first image they get is from a previous eruption and they throw it up like it's new that it happens all the time and it's happening again now this is uh totally in the the caldera this one i do have a one i'm gonna shoot you you think you could go to twitter yep Not sure if the National Park Service posted that. No, they did not. But this one, I think, is tonight. I can't verify it, but that one looks like tonight. Yeah, you can see it's a little time lapse. You can see it's by the wind in the front. It's a little sped up. You can see the billowing of the steam cloud there. That seemed like it seems like it was that earlier phase of the eruption when it was the, the lake was steaming away. Yeah, right. nice finding. Um, as far as our signals, let's see what we can what we can find here for. Let's check out our earthquakes again. Right, we don't have a whole lot of um, new earthquakes here, right? Um, or new earthquakes in the last two hours on this map show up in red. We don't have any red on here apart from the warning sign, all the oranges from what's happened earlier over the last two days. Right, the yellows over the last month. Right, so there's not really a whole lot to speak of. We can kind of even still. You kind of see it's interesting here and now that we know where the vents actually are we can kind of look at this map and we know that the vents are actually here here and here zones right in here right so no earthquakes right at those zones directly right but all along the edge of the caldera as it as it kind of adjusts to the the strain of the all the rocks between here and there getting pushed to the side right then here's where it actually catches apparently is these areas here and also deep underneath of course everything's adjusting not just on the surface in 2d but in 3d throughout the whole stack of the volcano all right so we don't see anything there from the in the earthquakes there's really nothing to look at we look at our tilt no signal on a tilt on kilauea right there good old right. uh good old the guardian running a 
uh, an article about this eruption showing Fisher 8. Class act. Class act. Sorry, I just, I cannot stand the, the complete laziness of some reporters. Like, mm -hmm. you just Google kill away, grab the first image, ship it, like, pretty much. All right, we got some other tote meters here of Kilauea. These are some at Caldera. Uekahuna is this one here on the left. No signal. Here's our Kilauea Iki on the right. Maybe a very small signal, but really not a whole lot to speak of here. Um, our summer camp might have shown some of the earthquake events kind of happening through here, but not really a whole lot to speak of. Nothing over at Sand Hill. It's just kind of in the southwest area as well. East Rift is showing nothing. No signal of change on anything in the East Rift. That's of concern to anybody. I'm sure it may be, but no change anywhere in East Rift all through here. South flank, no change in the south flank as well. All right, so our tilt signals are all holding steady. Um, we could try a rapid GPS. That might be interesting to look at to see what something like, like this might actually be. Actually, be sh how it actually shows up. Not very well. I mean, I suppose you can see that the scale has really changed. You can kind of see. In this plot, there's like a slow kind of climb right in here, and then really right in here, there's a kind of a bigger wiggle. But nothing super obvious within the range of the noise that you see, right? Certainly you can see there's been a trend rise, but nothing indicating that today would have been a day, or last night, or four hours ago. That's the case, it actually indeed what happened to be. That's Uikahuna, this is Byron's Ledge. Similar kind of pattern there. And... No need to go into too much detail notice, but I really don't see anything obvious in any of those that kind of shows. Right, so rapid GPS is something that's a little, little tricky. It's one of the things we kind of try to um, incorporate it in our data set, but a lot of times we have to learn how to use the signals and as, as we monitor how they respond to different actual events. And so we can kind of see that this kind of event, not so good for the rapid GPS um, or the tilt when it goes through this kind of pattern. Right, so... Our GPS isn't going to show up really um, for the next couple of days, but we really can see the pattern of buildup we've had, right? We can kind of see, for example, let's go back to this. Um, like the outlet, for example, we talked about how the outlet started de started moving south faster, right? Following the intrusion on December 2nd, and it was still moving to the south and nothing had changed. And so we knew something else was going to change. And here we are. Um, that's more telling us how we, how the stage was set to get here, rather than what's happening right now. So, um, USGS chimed in and said, "There's an amazing number of Kilauea eruptions that have that start at night and or on weekends." And here yes, we indeed. go, right? There. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we can we can we can go down that route as well. Um, Right now, I'm going down the route of watching uh, international news organizations completely not being able to handle this. Um, AP is covering it. They used an image from 2000 eruption as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like everybody just go grab some 2018 uh, footage and just ship it as uh, being 2020. It's not. Somebody like, you know, somebody like us that was there and watched these, you can show us any image damn near from 2018 and we'll know where it was taken up and what you're looking at, you know, so not getting bias. Um, and I'm just checking USGS is seeing if they're putting anything else out. We'll see if I can CNN, get a CNN image. did put out the right image. CNN did use an image from HBO for, from the 2020 eruption. So good on them. It's kind of what we're doing right now. We're waiting for data, waiting for new stuff to come in. Yeah, we uh, we've kind of at this point kind of told you everything we know. Right. Um, there's not a whole lot of concern happening here. And that's why we're checking, you know, like how the international media is covering it and stuff like that already. Yeah. I don't know if you remember from 2018, there was that image of uh, what 
mainlanders thought the eruption was and it showed like half the island covered in lava right and then it was like half of what the eruption actually was i feel like we're going to be right back in that one where we need to remake that except now it's just going to be a little dot it's like this is the eruption it's right here like, <laughs> within a few hundred feet from each other this is the eruption <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, not getting so much to load very well here, so yeah, we may, we may start thinking about wrapping it up here and, you know, maybe doing a summary summary video um, if we start, stop getting more information in and come back live on after a little break. Um, at least we can get some more information to share with you guys. You know, the story, we kind of showed you guys the, the best video we had. Let's see if I can find it again. Right. So basically, yeah, what uh, Julie's saying, if Talk to your friends and family on the mainland tomorrow. Let them know that the world is not ending out here, despite whatever the main media out there wants to portray it as. Everything's fine. We're cool. This is more normal than it is unnormal. Just been a two years without it makes people like, oh man, it's you know we, we're erupting again. It's this was what it was for ten years, right? It's very very you know. It's a very uh nonchalant basically event like we're this isn't the 2018 eruption this is 100 percent not that this is back to uh pele's in pele's playground not in you know john doe's backyard that's one thing to do that you know if we can do is try and keep media honest but you know that a lot of people tried at that and that doesn't work usually So here's a video. This is the best video we have released by USGS here of this event. You guys can see the fountain here on the left. On the east side, we're looking north from the north, or kind of maybe the northwest to the southeast, right across, looking at the growing lava lake where the water lake used to be there. Right. So and this is this is eruption kind of let's let's summarize it here, um, right? This is eruption of Hale Mau Mau began last night at nine thirty. Um, is ongoing, seems to be going strong. Um, it's gushing a good amount of lava. Doesn't show any signs of stopping anytime soon. You know, in the past eruptions like of this of this kind of in this pattern could go on for a few days to a couple weeks. That's kind of the range of it. Um, sometimes as long as a month or so. So we of course don't know. We we'll have to wait and see. But you know the initial indications of uh, the flux of lava coming out. It seems like it's going to be going on for a while. So we'll wait more imagery footage coming through here. Um, if there's anything you see, Dane? Just let us know. Um, Nothing new. Just seeing what's uh. Looks like Janice's uh, photo is getting some circulation in the tabloids, the one that we showed earlier. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Let's try and get, I'm gonna try and get some of the cams to load again, but yeah, we're kinda been through everything that we have to talk to at this point. Yeah, so. Just, so. Yeah. So yeah, you guys, I think we'll, maybe uh, we'll wind it down here. We've been, we've been streaming for uh, close to three hours now. Um, we'll take a break. We can come back at it, you know, and give us a chance to go use the bathroom and other things like that. Gather some more information without having to worry, guys. We'll come back at you guys um, a little bit more concise. Um, and we'll uh, pick back up and give you guys some more information here shortly. Yeah. That sound good, Dane? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, you guys. So we'll maybe take some questions. Let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Where is the lava coming from? Um, this is coming from the shallow magma chamber underneath Hale Mau Mau. Um, this is the Hale Mau Mau pit where the. Uh, I'm gonna have to pause. I'm gonna pause the video right here. I'm drawing a little bit. Right here is the main vent. Vent A. I've been calling it. Right. We'll see what you guys just call it. There's a vent B kind of over here, and a series. We'll call this the group of vent C. It seems like there's at least one fissure on the upper block over here 
and a higher fissure maybe at the upper part of the uh, part of the uh, crater wall kind of two fissures over here kind of combining going over a rapids so there's a kind of a cliff right here right so there's some lava falls pouring over the edge here and here and it's filling this lake right in here this is where the water pond used to be it's totally gone it was gone within 30 minutes of the eruption beginning um, all the steam boiled away right now it's a lot less steamy we can actually see into the bottom of the pit and see what's going on see it's full of lava the lava's got a crust on it right through here right you can kind of see crust moving where it, where the the main part of this flow seems to be kind of wrapping around the edge of this crater through here you can see that this flow is going through this way as well right there's kind of going underneath the crust through here you can kind of imagine there must be an underneath the crust motion back like this right in this direction that's filling and then this whole thing is kind of filling and if we had a time lapse maybe we could see this crust moving or wiggling or rotating it's kind of hard to tell at this point what it might be doing or if it's just lifting straight up right and how much pressure is underneath it whether it might crack and put lava flows out the middle um, or eventually if if it's a high spot if it'll get filled in from the edges right kind of get this outer rim will get wider and wider and kind of make an island in the middle we'll, we'll have to see what happens um, the vent is quite high. I can see there's quite a bit of distance yeah. right between a lava level and the vent level. So it's going for quite a while. Those, so two areas that we were talking about, it looks like it's right at that level, that ring of SO2 that goes around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those uh, yeah. walls that were there, looks like it came yeah. up through those, one of those, to me at least, from where that just is located. So hard to tell in the dark. We'll know so much more in the morning when there's like an overflight and you know somebody with a decent lens and they snap some photos so we can see the details. Then we'll know more. But you know this is what we're working with. What you're seeing right here, a picture, the a lot of black and a little glow, and that's about it. Yeah. So I'll roll a video again. You guys can kind of see the fountain moving. You can see kind of gushing over this little rock, moving through here, going under the crust. Crust is bubbling all the way around. Right. See the fissure, a fissure line right down here. Fissure line over here. Small fissure over here. And the big vent obviously is right through here. Right, so yeah. that's what we got, you guys. Eruption at Hale Momo. Um in the end it ended up being two years. Right, two years and how many months stain? Since the end the of the collapse. eruption, yeah, well, I, and it was beginning beginning of August that the summit stopped. Something like that. All right, so you, August. Well, then August, it's in three months. Three months, four months. Three months, yeah. Yeah. Just under two and a half years. Two and a half years, about yeah. So apparently, uh, the Steve Gerling's uh, reporting, or Gerling is reporting that uh, news media is now caught in uh, the TV news has caught in wind of the eruption and is now uh, doing their thing on it. And they're kind of like, we're back, you know, Kilauea is back at it. They're, yeah, uh, we're going to try All and right. do non-centralized coverage, and we'll be back on, hopefully, what, well, maybe in the morning. I'm not yeah, sure we'll if see. anything's going to come out tonight. Or in yeah, the, yeah. We may, we may, yeah I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe we can come back on, maybe, maybe we can do like a shorter 10, 15 minute shorter version of this. We can kind of, you know, right. um, summarize everything. Um one thing that I would like to prepare while, while we're offline a little bit is I have some old pictures of 1924 follow-up eruptions and other old pictures of the caldera. We can compare to what we see happening now and see all these parallels. I'd really love, love to get, get this for you guys. So um, yeah. maybe we, we can add some of that kind of context for you guys and kind of summarize what's happening now and we can kind of leave it at that. And then when we have new break information in the morning, come back to you guys in the morning. People are saying Mauna Loa has activity right now. I'm going to check again, but uh, last time I checked, it was a no. And it still looks like a no. Yeah, nothing in Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is not the, not the action. The action is Kilauea. Yeah, okay. All right, just clearing up the last question. All right, we'll be back on. All right, you guys. So, yeah, stay tuned. We'll, I'll try to, we'll try to make it back here in 15, maybe 15 minutes or so if you guys are going to still be up and up over. Um, so we'll be back uh, for another part of broadcast here shortly. We'll um, probably make it more concise and maybe more historical context. And uh, we'll see you guys then. All right. I'm Philip Ong here with Dan DuPont. Mahalo for joining us, you guys, on Hawaii Tracker. Live coverage of the 2020 Kilauea eruption. Mahalo and aloha.
All right, All right. we off? Yes. Sir.